row with Mike Gundy. Well, Coach Gundy, you guys have already punched your ticket to the Big 12 championship game. You're in the conversation for a college football playoff. How do you keep the focus squarely on this game with your team? Well, we've done everything the same, and uh, I've asked them to do the same thing they've done the other 11 weeks. They did a good job with it. You know, they know everything going on. I don't really have to say much. I don't have to motivate them. They've got this far being, as a, being together as a team. I think they'll do the same thing. You played in this game as a quarterback. You understand the emotion involved. What do you say to Spencer Sanders about using that emotion in a positive way? You know, he's been good. Spencer's really been even killed this year, and he's done a good job. He's got a lot of experience. I'm expecting him to play very well. Thanks, God. 31st Bedlam game for Gundy. As a head coach, he's 2-14. and 14. But for a change, Kirk, they feel pretty good about the quarterback matchup here because Spencer Sanders, not the most spectacular, but solid, consistent this year. And he's been around for three years, plays with a lot of emotion. Now they've asked him to be a different kind of quarterback. He doesn't need to be dynamic. He just needs to manage the game and not turn it over. I think Lincoln Riley has shown some respect for this Pokes defense. He won the toss, said taking the football. He's going to kick away here. And this Cowboy offense with this revved-up environment, rarely has their fan base been as rabid for this one as they are tonight. This should be fun. Brennan Presley, Dominic Richardson are deep. We see the kickoff from Gabe Berkic. He drives it into the end zone. And so we're going to see Spencer Sanders. He's a threat to run. Oklahoma's been a little bit vulnerable to running quarterbacks, and he could hurt them that way tonight. Yeah, he's known as a dual-threat guy. As I said, I think he's really grown in taking care of the ball. This is an offense. To, you know, it's okay to punt. It's okay to throw the ball away. And Spencer Sanders has had to grow in that area. Now, tonight, because of this defense, I do think his mobility, whether it's design run, option, or scrambling, he's going to carry it 12 to 15 times. Number two rusher on this team after the starting tailback. Jalen Warren, who's gritting his teeth and playing hurt tonight, number seven. And a very hard clap from Sanders trying to draw the Sooners offside. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, number 70. Five-yard penalty, it's still first down. It's Hunter Woodard, the right guard. Drew his own man off that hard, that hard clap. Big emotional rivalry game. Just want to settle in. Both sides want to settle in. Delayed handoff. Warren escapes the tackle. Dodges another man and shows you his skill set. DJ Graham got him to the ground. Well, he has low center of gravity, and he is tough to bring down. I feel like, you know, he's 5'8". I feel like sometimes he does a good job at just getting behind the offensive line and making it tough on the linebackers. That time, there was penetration. You cannot bring him down with arm tackles, even though he is fighting through some pain. More than a 1,000-yard rusher already. Sanders looks to throw. His slant is incomplete. Try to get it to Tay Martin, his top receiver. Hard hit from Woody Washington. He's back healthy in that secondary. Uh, they, they play great defense. They want to run the football. The Chick-fil-A impact players. Jalen Warren, who we've already seen, seven. He's got to be able to get a big night tonight, averaging close to five yards a, a carry. And then Tay Martin leads a very young group of receivers. He's the elder statesman, number one. Isaiah Thomas is outstanding at getting penetration, applying uh, pressure on the quarterback and Brian Asamoah, a veteran linebacker in the middle, will have to do a good job against his obvious run oriented style offense. Third and five, Sanders pressure delivers under duress over the middle and it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Presley, broken up by Justin Broyles and the Sooner defense gets a quick three and out. But they're going to twist a lot, especially on third down. They're going to try to affect the communication of the offensive line and try to get somebody free. That time, Redmond does get free and affects the accuracy. Good job by Sanders, buying just enough time to get that ball off, but not able to hold on there for a first down was Presley. So the false start before the first play stalls the drive and Tom Hutton lefty punter gets it away Washington wrist back and makes the fair catch at the 29 so 
Here comes Caleb Williams. Let's see if he can get back on track. The mantra that Riley has been saying to him all week, just make the routine plays. Make the simple stuff. Don't yeah. worry about the spectacular. Yeah, instead of hitting home runs, he said, hey, it's, it's okay to have, you know, hit a single. Hit, hit a double. Hit a single. Let the home runs eventually come to you. And tonight, they feel like they may have to, because Oklahoma State's so aggressive, they may have to throw to get back to setting up the run. Opening statement now for this tough Cowboys defense. They've given up a quick touchdown to OU each of the last three Bedlam games. Desperate to break that trend right here. Washington finds the open man and squeezes the ball in there to Braden Willis, and it's quick first down and across the 40. Chris, there's a single, right? There, that's, that's what Lincoln Riley, decisive, quick, quick decision. Defense is spread out. They're, again, they're attacking. They want to penetrate. Nice play call by Lincoln Riley. Balls out quickly by Caleb Williams. And a first down on their first play. Kennedy Brooks. And this is a tough group to run on. You talked about that wall of humanity that just changes the line of scrimmage. They stopped him for a two-yard gain. That was Tyler Lacey, the Chick-fil-A impact players when the Sooners have the football. Yeah, Kennedy Brooks and really put the offensive line up there. They're going to have to do a good job against this aggressive defensive front. Marvin Mims when he gets isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Brock Martin on the outside, nine. Really having a great year. And the leader, the veteran, Malcolm Rodriguez, one of the top players. Such an instinctive linebacker in the middle of this defense. Second and eight. Williams fires downfield, and he had a man overshot Michael Woods. Well, Michael Woods kind of hesitated you know, in coverage there against Bernard Converse. It's one-on-one -on -one without safety help. You see that? That slight hesitation, I think, affected the timing. I don't know what Woods was thinking. I don't know if he was thinking that he might be bringing him back with, like, a back shoulder, but instead... I think Williams saw that he had maybe a step on him, so he led him downfield. But uh, that hesitation that time by Woods on his route Im impacted that route. And now they need eight against the number one third down defense in America. Delayed handoff. Brooks is going to try to run for it. Doesn't get there. Hammered down at the 45-yard line. And it's the Cowboys defense that gets off the field quickly. Well, they, they defended this counter play all week with Jim Knowles. They know it's coming. And they know how to defend it. They've seen it in their sleep. This is an offense all, always with Lincoln Riley. They love that counter play. Surprised on third and long, they went with it there. But the Pokes defense ready to bring it down before they got to the first down marks. Michael Turk would lead FBS in punting, but doesn't punt often enough. Less than three per game. Transfer from ASU. Boots it high. And it will bounce out of bounds. It's a touchback. Oklahoma State caught a break that flirted with going out at the one-foot line. Big 12, the only conference right now where the championship games are not set in the Power Five. Oklahoma needs to win, or it's Baylor. Hit Wake Forest in the ACC. Oregon got the win they needed in the Civil War. They'll take on Utah Friday night. And Georgia Bam was already a done deal. How about Michigan? I was going to say, some people may be looking. Iowa, how did, what happened? Well, Wisconsin lost to Minnesota. And Iowa, with a win, they go into the Big Ten Championship. Sanders takes off. A lot of green in front of him. Gets a nice block on the edge and scoots for about 15 yards to the 35. Jaden Bray, the freshman receiver, made the block. Yeah, they're they're man to man. It blitz the linebacker and they don't keep the edge to the defense. Blitz up the middle. Good job by Jalen Warren. Edge is lost and that's what Spencer Sanders can do. He said 12 to 15 times tonight, whether it's design run or like that, where he's just improvising. He's athletic enough to make the defense pay for it if they give him give him room like that. Where they Lost the edge. Warren picked up the blitz script. Looked like he enjoyed doing that. Yeah. Delivering oh, that yeah. blow to okay. the rusher. They fake it to him. Sanders with a downfield shot. Has a man cross field. And the catch is made by Presley. And quickly the Cowboys threaten to OU territory. Yeah, man to man. Inside leverage. See the defensive back fields to the inside. Route goes away from that. And the ball is perfect.
quickly thrown towards the sideline. So great execution and a good throw by Sanders, putting that away from Fields, the defender. AC Dunn, play caller, they're cranking the tempo. Empty backfield, Sanders hit as he throws, but he gets it out again to Presley, who makes the cut, another first down inside the 35. Well, Mike Gunny, in there and delivered. Mike Gunny and Casey Dunn with some of the success. They are getting the ball out, getting and going with some tempo. Benito almost gets there in his blind side. In fact, hits him as he releases the ball, gets around the left tackle. But Sanders felt that and got the ball out. Benito looks like he's on the sideline after that last play. Warren knocked down after a short game. Check it that Sanders on the keeper. That's a key guy to keep an eye on, one of the most dynamic playmakers on this OU defense. Junior from Fort Lauderdale. Sanders loops the ball downfield. Caught! Touchdown! Tay Martin and the Cowboys strike first. Strong drive by Sanders, Kirk. Man. He did a heck of a job of getting the ball out quickly. They played zone this time. They've been playing man-to-man, -man, and because it was zone with his high safety, he had to get the ball out quickly to be able to get the ball in to Martin before the safety broils came over. Without that hesitation, the progressive pylon cam shows he gets into the end zone, but a great ball. Two incompletions on the opening drive, three for three on that possession as they take it 80 yards in five plays and Tanner Brown takes on the PAT. That's a little old school Oklahoma State offense. Now the Cowboys with that tough defense up seven in the first four minutes, three seconds. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Duluth Trading Company. Clothing and gear designed and tested to do. Festive Stillwater, that's Tay Martin, who plays that Z position among the receiving core. Des Bryant, who's here tonight, started that. And look at this tradition of guys who have been you know, highly productive. Justin Blackman, James Washington, Tylen Wallace most recently, and now Tay Martin. Was once at Washington State with Mike Leach has that position. Yeah, you play the Z in, in Mike Gundy's offense, and you, you're going to get opportunities. And Tay Martin has battled through quite a few things, but is the leader. We've had a lot of injuries on the perimeter this year, but uh, number one, off to a good start tonight. Unquestioned veteran in a very young receiving core makes his 55th catch of the season. Tomorrow morning on Sunday NFL Countdown, Patriots rookie Mac Jones. And Tide Star sits down to share the story of his journey to the NFL. But on Monday Night Football, Russell and the Seahawks, hungry for a win, take on Washington, 8 o'clock, ESPN and the app. Weird to see Seattle last place in the NFC West. All right. Let's see if Oklahoma can answer here. Two back look, Jeremiah Hall, the H back, and Brooks flanking Williams. That's Mims who comes in motion to get the ball. Well, they try to get it to him, but overled by Williams. That's one of those simple plays he didn't make. Yeah, and, and against his defense, you're going to need to make the simple plays and get two or three yards because of how aggressive they are. I tell you, this defense, they don't have a first-round draft pick on the defense, and yet they're one of the top defenses in the country. We'll talk more about why that is here in a little bit. Williams. On the run, fires and wide open is Jeremiah Hall. The H-back rumbling down the field. A man who scored a trick play a year ago in Bedlam hurts the Cowboys again big time. Just a good job of settling in. I don't think the defense was really completely ready. See, Caleb is patient, waiting, kind of sells it, and then eventually looks back to Hall where the defense completely lost him. And the big fella's dangerous after the catch. Kennedy Brooks slips as he makes the cut. Jeremiah Hall, an impressive guy. He's going to finish his MBA soon. Took on the challenge of that. Really a guy who's gained the trust of this coaching staff. It hurts you in different ways. Yeah, they all, I always say when we do Oklahoma, they've always had a guy like that. You know, he's that H-back, fullback type of guy. I always refer to Dimitri Flowers as that, that kind of guy that's, that's big and can do a lot of different things, but, but also is dangerous with the ball in his hands. Not four touchdown passes this year. Eric Gray now into the game to the left of Williams. 
Caleb straight back against pressure. Watches to the end zone and flags come out. Michael Woods was the receiver. Thomas Harper interfered. Yeah, Woods on a slot fade against Harper in the safety. He had a lot of room to work to the outside. Tough spot to be for a safety when he's out there on an island. Good play call here by Lincoln Riley. Seeing that matchup, and I love the ball that Caleb Williams puts it up in the air where his receiver can adjust to it. Pass interference. Defense, number 13. The penalty is half the distance to the goal from the previous spot in an automatic first down. Thomas, the younger brother of Devin Harper. Yeah, the, the, see how he's trying to work himself back to the ball, and really, Harper never truly found the ball. By the time they make contact, he has no idea where the football is, and Woods is trying to work himself back to the football. Penalty probably saved the touchdown. Yeah. Oklahoma spots it now, first and goal. This is a tough spot against this defense at the nine-yard line. Riley talks about that. You know, first you go from the nine. Yeah, it's tricky. Remember, his, his legs and his creativity, something that de all defenses always have to be aware of. This is strength against strength. Sooner's pretty efficient down here in the red zone. But the Cowboys have been really stout. They allow a touchdown less than half the time to their opponents down here. The paddle people trying to make it tough for Williams. Brooks on a delay, has to bounce it, and he'll be stacked up, dropped behind the line. Good job here by this defense. Slow developing counterplay. And again, I talked earlier how much they drilled that this week. He's forced to bounce it outside. That is not where Kennedy Brooks is, is real strong. He is more of a downhill, one cut type of back. But a good job by the defense, again, of pushing that to the outside. Rodriguez, top tackler in this defense by 25 tackles there on the stop again. Second and goal. Pressure comes. Delivered, touchdown! Nice pitch and catch, they beat the blitz, and Brian Darby with his second touchdown of the season, and Wiley's offense answers quickly. One of the unheralded guys on this very deep receiving core. Darby, a sophomore from College Station, just his seventh catch of the season. Now you bring pressure like that, you better get there. Caleb Williams saw that blitz that you talked about, Chris, and got the ball out of his hands quickly. Well, they said it wouldn't be a shootout. This feels like vintage bedlam, 7-7, seven, seven, like seven minutes in. But you get the blitz from the outside right here and right here, and then here is your matchup that they're trying to take advantage of. They do a good job. See the blitz? The ball, they just don't have a chance to get there. It wasn't even necessarily picked up. It was just that the ball got out so quickly, and then the defensive back had to work his way over there. He gets lost in coverage, and Darby does a nice job of locating it and making a catch. And you're right, Chris, it does have, kind of have a feeling. We've been here a lot of times, kind of a back-and-forth kind of game. I said, come on, Mike. I mean, you, you, shootouts are your, your DNA, right? He said, we're not equipped to win a shootout against anybody right now, much less Oklahoma. Said, yeah. But early well, on, the offense has had some success. For people that aren't familiar with who Oklahoma State has, has become this year, we've talked about it, but they are a defensive-oriented, don't lose the game on offense, run the football, punt, throw it away, don't turn it over, win field position with turnover turnover margin and, and, and uh, special teams and you know that drive we just saw from Spencer Sanders was very different from who they've been these last four or five weeks. The last year the folks thought they had a defense good enough to hang with the Sooners in Norman. It was 21-0 midway first quarter. They were down. This year they feel much more confident. Presley has a little crease. That's good blocking. Makes a cut. And a strong return out across the 40 will set up Spanchers in great field position. It was all number three in that last touchdown. Yeah, I mean, it, it, he uh, he really had a great drive. They were going tempo. This really got it started. Recognition of getting to the edge of that defense and using his legs. Very athletic guy. Love his accuracy. He's clean in the pocket, has time. That time, Benito kind of got to him, but still was able to get the ball out to Presley. Recognizes too high safety. He's got to get the ball out quickly, so that safety 25 can't get over. 
and he makes a nice throw there. So he is in sync, at least early in the game for Oklahoma State. Well, he says Nick Benito was checked out by the athletic trainers. He's okay. Back in the ball game for Oklahoma. Sanders looks to throw in first down, and Warren in the flat. He's a nice chuck gain on first down. Picked up about five. You know, th this Oklahoma defense has great potential, but I, I think for the most part, they've underachieved from who they can be, especially up front. And I think it's been driving Alex French crazy because he knows who, what they're capable of being, and, and they just cannot play consistently. They've been better the last couple games, but not quite the defense that I think they imagined this year. Warren takes a handoff. And they get a crease against that defense. They expected they'd be one of the elite defensive fronts in the country, right? Yeah, it hasn't panned out. Yeah, it has not panned out at all. And this is what I'm talking about, how hard it is to sometimes find him, right? You're going to move and twist and, and slant your defensive line. It puts a lot of those linebackers. They throw it in the flat. And a completion to Blaine Green, another one of the true freshman receivers. No fumble. He was whistled down. Freshman from Allen, Texas. It's become kind of a fast flirter. They use him at the cowboy back position. It was kind of a hybrid position. Yeah, as well, and they, they move. And they'll say, you know, in meetings during uh, the week, he'll go to the receivers group, then he'll go with the cowboy backs to, to kind of learn two different positions. That's a lot on a true freshman, but they, they feel that he can handle it, and he's got a really bright future. Not only a future, he's, he's doing a heck of a job this year. Here we go. Cowboys threatening again at the 29, looking to throw again on first down. Sanders trying to buy time, flips it. And has a man open, and that's Martin again. First down in the red zone. Boy, number one a bit. Another good job by Jalen Warren picking up the blitz. Seven. You're right. He's not only picking it up. I think he'd rather pick up the blitz than run the football. Keeper. And got a little bit of a block. Martin on the edge. Pat Fields drove him out near the 15. Right, watch this recognition of the play before. Watch seven in the backfield. He looks left, then he comes back, he sees it, boom! I mean, that, that's how you take care of your quarterback. That's impressive. From the pocket. Dirt on the sideline, and the catch is made at the eight-yard line. It's a first down, green again, first and goal. Uh, just a really good mix right now, mixing in a little tempo, different formations, running the ball, throwing the ball, a little bit of quarterback creativity. This Oklahoma defense right now on its heels, and Oklahoma State is attacking. And now a throw for the end zone, and a battle on the edge, and a flag comes out. D.J. Graham was defending on Jaden Bray. Too handsy. Gonna be battles on the edge all night as there always are this rivalry game. Prior to the pass, holding defense number nine. The penalty is half the distance to the goal from the previous spot and an automatic first down. So he just grabs him. Yeah, right at the line of scrimmage. Grabs onto his shoulder pads and the jersey. That was even before the ball was in the air. You heard the official on the call. So they get inside the five yard line now. This is, a, this is a six play 54 yard drive at a minute 46. Just moving right down the field. You think it's a Warren. End around to Martin who just waltzes in. They're in a play calling rhythm and executing beautifully. Cowboys back on top. Again, I, I think Oklahoma's defense right now is just trying to figure things out. They are lost, and it's a great call. Look at the defense flowing. Everybody coming this way. He'll pick up a nice block right here, but a great time to call this, an aggressive call. He walks into the end zone. You know when Sanders is feeling, you see a little pop? That was, that was some, with some style to Martin coming around. Just kind of loft it in the air. Receiver grabs it full speed. And Oklahoma State... What feels like a vintage bedlam game. That was a no look. That was, that was a no look. Very stylish here. <laughs> gotcha. 14 7, Oklahoma State. For bedlam, this is just balmy weather for the Goodyear blimp providing aerial coverage. Anything can happen as long as you have the drive. Goodyear, more driven. Where's the where's the windstorm, the ice storm that usually accompanies? Oh, I know. Yeah, this oh, is the nicest. We've been coming here forever. This is the nicest weather. Riley and Gundy preseason talk in midfield. They were talking about.
the weather. What else? Because it is surprising the folks here. Ray lets it go. Now, in the previous drive, take a look at, as they were cranking up the tempo, here's what happened on that completion. Yeah, look, look at this, and, you know, if you wonder, is it, it happened so fast. Bill, what happened there? What, what, why, why didn't they stop that? If the officials on the field rule that that's forward progress, then replays out of it unless it has to do with a first down or goal line. Okay. Even if the whistle hasn't blown because it had not blown at that point when the ball was ripped out. That's correct. Replay is no uh, horse in the race. Okay. So once again, Williams and the Sooners have to answer down a score. And Brooks is hammered. Oh, actually, I got faked out. Williams kept the ball and just heaves it sideways. Heavy pressure from Devin Harper. You'll we'll have to have a conference about this one. He was still in the pocket. But a good read. You, you didn't get faked out. I mean, that, that was a really good read of Caleb Williams pulling that to get it away from the pressure. That's his read, man. He ta obviously takes Gray. Now he's just in survival mode before Harper can get to him. Did get outside of the pocket there, Bill. Well, the ball didn't make it back to the line, but a receiver was coming back. Yeah. Plus, it, the hit may have altered the throw. You see intentional grounding called a lot more this season and for a lot less than that. Blake like winding down. Williams steps up in the pocket and throws it across the middle. And the catch is made by Braden Willis. The wheels knocked down. Slow to get up a few yards short of the marker. Jim Knowles bringing pressure there from the boundary corner. Christian Holmes. Again, this is a very, very aggressive defense. They like to give pressure. They like to disguise and give you different looks where the pressure will come from. Want to put a, as much heat on that offensive line and the quarterback as they can. Remember, as good as Caleb Williams is, he's still a young guy seeing some of these looks for the first time. Third down and two. Are you looking to throw for it? Williams flushed, gets away, fires, and what a clutch completion. Marvin Mims just stayed alive, and Williams makes a play to keep the drive going. Yeah, they, they rush three here, but this gives you an idea. Look at the defense. Look what he's looking into. And think about what you want to try to, who you want to try to throw the football to. Now, and the, right there where the linebackers are, he's got a chance to make that throw, but doesn't take it. He had Mario Williams right in the middle, but never saw it. Good job of improvising after missing that open receiver. Set of punting, putting that defense right back on the field. Sooners with a fresh set of downs. Hall and Gray in the game. Again, play action. Again, Williams under pressure. Escapes, scans the field, and will just dart forward, pick up about five. Colin <laughs> Oliver, leading sacker in this team, a true freshman, was chasing him down. Really good-looking young true freshman, Oliver, 30, who has tremendous length. But how about the strength? Caleb Williams known for his speed, but that time showing the strength to be able to pull out of that potential sack and get some positive yardage. Early in the drive, Jim Knowles, the defensive staff, making wholesale substitutions. Fresh bodies in for the Cowboys. They'll use lots of players up front. From the pistol, it's a reverse. Pitch back to West, who makes a cut, and has a first down exploding into Cowboys territory. Well, when you have a, a defense that's fast flowing, you want to try to make them pay for that by bringing it back the other way on reverses and misdirection. A defense, you can see those black jerseys are, are going very quickly. They make a read, and they're gone. And that time they were able to come back, make them pay for that a bit. Almost got loose. He almost got through that. West, I thought, was just just barely. Only had one rush yeah. before Kirk. It was a 66-yard run. Very close to pulling that out of there. Williams delivers across the middle. And that's the rugged Hall making his second catch. Knocked down at the 40. It'll be a seven-yard game. Lincoln Riley felt it'd be hard to sustain drives against this Oklahoma State defense. He, he thought explosives and, and big plays would have to be a factor tonight because they're just so good defensively. Sooners doing early what no point has really done against this Cowboy defense. He only gave up 15 points a game. 
And they've been very effective stuffing the run all year. Eric Gray got smacked right at the line. Brendan Evers got there first. A big battle tonight in this game is going to be the Oklahoma offensive line, where I think they've grown and gotten a lot better against the attacking downhill defense of, of Jim Knowles. Rodriguez and Harper, the most productive linebackers, are always coming downhill, and it's tough to climb to that second level. So that'll be a great battle, especially in obvious running downs. See how they hold up, the Sooners up front. Third down again, they need three. Woods, the receiver, took the handoff. Not quite as physical as one of the running backs. And he doesn't get first down yardage. So a fourth down coming up just inside of the Cowboys 40. Harvell Peel on the stop. These linebackers and safeties, they fly down. It's what, a, what a benefit of having guys that are in their fourth year in Jim Knowles' system. And a lot of these guys played as freshmen and sophomores. He said our ability to adjust on the fly because of the experience and the veterans. A lot of seniors are on this defense. You can see how, how sound they are fundamentally with their angles. Only need about half a yard on fourth down. Play clock is winding down, and they're going to have to spend the time out here. Williams was still checking the sidelines for adjustments, so why to spend the time out on this fourth down play? Well, you look at all the stats and you study all the tape and you talk to all the coaches. This is going to be a very different kind of bedlam game. The defenses are, are strong, especially for the home team here. We've seen a wild first quarter so far. <laughs> it's like this is old bedlam, you know, with the offenses back and forth. It's a big fourth down, though, yeah. early in this game. Because I think Oklahoma State's offense, and we'll see what kind of uh, adjustments Alex Grinch can make, but right now Oklahoma State, they're in control. You said lost on all, all use defense. They, they look lost. You know, they, just because things were happening fast, it was such a mixed look of, of formations, personnel groupings, run, pass. It was just, it's more of a compliment to Oklahoma State and what they're doing than it's really a knock on, on Oklahoma. See if the Sooners use that offensive line you talked about make it a straightforward call on fourth and a half a yard not an easy call here you know if you, you stay in the middle into the teeth of that defense that's that's a tough place or do you go out on the edge you don't want to run side, you don't want to run sideways against this team either muscle bunch to the right of the formation and it's a sneak Fighting hard and looks like Williams was able to fall across that yellow yeah. line and convert I thought Brock Martin nine on the edge of the defense hit him at first and, and maybe Would have a chance to get his left shoulder in front of Caleb Williams watch him come from the right right there He hits him but to the credit of Caleb Williams He got low enough was able to avoid the shoulder of, of Brock Martin to pick up that first down in the flat but the running back was covered and Williams is knocked down by Malcolm Rodriguez just a really good job by Tyler Lacey taking that away he's a big defensive end he's right here I mean that's a play of a linebacker what he does recognizes I'm gonna get out here take that away and Caleb Williams doesn't have an answer and that's where Malcolm Rodriguez and his instincts able to corral Caleb Williams mentioned the lack of NFL day one talent here but these guys are so well schooled the mad scientist Jim Knowles has got to be one of the top contenders for the Broyles award this year to keep her from Williams and he's rocked hit very hard and driven back by Devin Harper Th their head was spinning when, when Knowles first came in the Ivy League background yeah. so intelligent walks around wearing a blazer yeah. like, where is this guy we're, we're lost what's he telling us they picked it up in the last oh, few yeah, years. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, you, you're around him for four years. Again, watch the big guy Lacey again. Takes away the back. Now you've got Harper and the rest of this defense. It's just kind of old-school fundamentals getting to the football, your pursuit angles, taking away space of the offense. And what the offense wants to live in is space where their athletes can make, make big plays. But against these guys, it's just tough to do. Now they bail out. Look at this defense. Everybody dropping back on third and 16 and with a three-man rush They put Williams under pressure who just launches over the top of everybody and just over the outstretched hands of Mario Williams 
That was a funky play. It really was. They had seven guys all the way back at about 15 yards. But what happened was because Caleb Williams took so much time, he gets away from the pressure of Lacey right there. He keeps it alive. Look back here. Look at the safety. He, he just couldn't last that long. He lost himself. He, he was more focused on Le 11, Hazelwood, and lost four. Mario Williams get behind him, and Oklahoma State catches a break there. Pretty good throw, backpedaling, yeah. off balance, just <laughs> heaved it over everybody's head. Michael Turk, high punt, and a flag down. And they bump into him. It has to be a personal foul for this to matter. I kind of just knocked into him his foot as he landed. You see the call from Kevin Hassel, this Big 12 crew. And the five or 15 yard variety is crucial here. It's a pretty good here that, that left foot. Personal foul, yeah. roughing the kicker on the defense. That's a 15 yard penalty, brings an automatic first down. Crowd doesn't like it, of course, when you hit a guy's ankle and the, the leg is extended up in the air, he's very vulnerable. You ever been a guy that boos at, at, the, at the ball game? You ever been that guy? I've been that guy. Have you? At a hockey game? Yeah, sure. You, you boo? But well, Mike Gundy's booing right now. You saw the replay on the screen. Look at my man. That's heartfelt booing right there from Beard. I mean, he's going all, well, he's that's all a, in. That's a big play. Instead of Oklahoma State getting the football back, Richardson, the wide receiver, with that personal foul, Sooners Mike's now set up for the 27. Mike's seeing that replay, and he's. I think he's saying what you said initially. Like, did he? Was it roughing, or did he run into him? But. Well, the replays I saw, I thought it was pretty clear that he roughed that, that leg. No, he's, again, he's in a very vulnerable position with the right leg up in the air, but it wasn't very rough. I mean, you usually take care of the punters. Lincoln Riley going crazy, wanting to go fast, wanting Caleb Williams to... Now he's going to call a timeout. He's frustrated. Yeah, the play clock was winding down again. He's frustrated. Look at him. That's part of having a young quarterback. You know, there's this talking to the center. You got a backup center in there as well. Teammates were talking about how Caleb Williams' approach to practice changed. Remember, he didn't play high school football in 2020. He had great success. He had never had a game really like that loss at Baylor when they threw for less than 100 yards. And his approach, Jeremiah Hall told us after that, was to come in with, you know, more interactive and, and be more in command and the teammates were impressed how we responded to that in practice which is think about it you're a true freshman playing at a school like oklahoma where the expectations are to win every game and you have a setback like that i, I you, you learn with these young players because you don't know you're speculating but you really don't know until right. you see it and and so that was a very favorable reaction by the entire team to see what he did and first down brooks Breaks the tackle and his muscle down after about a seven-yard game by Tanner McAllister. A really good job at the offensive line here, opening this thing up on the on the right side. Look at that Murray Robinson. Look at that big hole. And that's the kind of running Kennedy Brooks likes. Getting downhill, quick read, and he's more of a slasher. He doesn't necessarily always want to work sideline to sideline. Final 30 seconds of this first quarter. Sooners on a methodical drive. Williams slips down, and that'll be another sack. Lost his footing as he planted there. Israel Antoine and Jason Taylor from the safety position got him. Yeah, I mean, what, what a push. We talked about that in the open, how they get a, a good push in the interior. But here he's kind of disguising, and then they bring the pressure late. Kennedy Brooks releases, maybe wanting the ball. And in fact, Caleb Williams looked like he was about to go out there, but there was another defender. So just too many, too many black jerseys on that play for Caleb Williams. He just kind of had to eat it. 45th sack for the Cowboys. That's a new school record. Number one sack defense in America has knocked the Sooners back. But Oklahoma threatening. Exciting first quarter here in Stillwater. 14-7, Oklahoma State. Back after this message to the word from your local ABC station. Welcome back. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Presented by Capital One. 
Start of the second quarter, Oklahoma State up by seven. They won their last seven home games. That's the best streak in five years. But over the years, Oklahoma has been so dominant both here and in Norman. One of the most lopsided in-state rivalries out there. Oaks trying to re-script it tonight. It's the 15th play of yeah, Oklahoma Drive. Look at it, same thing. Uh, pressure, launch to the end zone. One-on-one, -on -one, caught, touchdown. Austin Stogner. The H-backs have been enormous so far for OU. Are you kidding me? Honestly, are you kidding me on this throw? A fadeaway, they bring everybody. They bring the house. And he puts it as he's falling away, up over the shoulder of Stogner, away from the defender. Look at the big guy. You got a big receiver against the safety, put it up in the air. There's a progressive pylon camera that's checking just to make sure that he breaks the plane. Looks like he does. Very close there, Bill. <laughs> Stogner at 6-6. And the H-backs, five catches tonight. It was Mikey Henderson who played that position a year ago for Oklahoma. They, they just ate the Cowboys alive the passes to the H-back. Well, that, look, like you said, Chris, look at the blitz. I mean, they bring, they bring everybody. Stalker says, I told you guys. They bring, look at this, one, three, everybody's coming, and here he is. It's a big tight end out in space. And look at this matchup. Look at the pressure. Nobody's going to pick this up. I want you to watch 13 fall away as he's throwing that. And then look where this football lands. Yes. That's just beautiful. So the roughing the punter penalty on John Paul Richardson, which prolongs the drive, ends up being crucial as OU has drawn level again at 14. Big fella had a little push there at the end, but when you throw the ball that well, hopefully, Bill, that officials let that go. I mean, it wasn't that big of a push. We were talking earlier in the game about mutual combat. Yeah. They both were kind of putting their hands on. I like that. Nobody's really gaining an advantage. Right, right, You're just right. finding your opponent. Yeah. How about that throw? That that Oklahoma fans who've seen Williams struggle the last couple of games is a very positive start. Yeah, the young quarterback on the road against one of the better defenses in America. From the goal line, Presley. Another good return. Once again, he's finding space. Cuts it back. Brennan Presley into Oklahoma territory. Can they run him down? Touchdown, Oklahoma State. A lightning strike. 100 yards. With his speed, he doesn't need a lot of room. Some good blocks on his side. He pulled away from Brian Mead, the linebacker who's covering that kickoff. Looked like he had a chance to maybe bring him down. But the right side on that right return, a couple critical blocks, and you get him out in space, he's exciting. You're right. Excellent blocking once again early in the return, the second straight kickoff return. But that time when he got space, they could not run him down. 5'8", 175 out of Tulsa. Watch, watch 5, 52, 47. Boom, boom. A couple good blocks. Then right there, I thought Mead might bring him down. Now he's dangerous. Now he's out in space. Nobody's going to be able to catch him. Fireworks all over the place. And the special teams deliver for Mike Gundy. The third time, Oklahoma State back on top by a touchdown. Spencer Sanders says, I got no problem with skipping a series. Let's take the lead on special teams. And what an answer after that, that great drive of 15 plays and a throw by Caleb Williams. There's a reaction from the quarterback. This is Bedlam. Presley's had a terrific year as a receiver, but he has just built perfectly for this role. Once again, this Oklahoma offense is going to have to answer. They've been up to it so far. For Tyreek Hill in an electric play. That new series with that can use oh, yeah. Oklahoma State. Yeah. You do something in this rivalry, especially when you're on the Cowboys side, if you can win this game, that's that's become Part of Oklahoma State lore. Great.
knocked down by his own man. Tripped down at the 18-yard line. AT&T 5G Skycam. Zooming over the field here. Skycast is streaming live on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. Great Clips Command Center. Also streaming on the ESPN app and ESPN3. Lots of ways to enjoy this Bedlam game. So Oklahoma. Williams and the Sooners Kirk back to work for their 16. Just as Lincoln Riley told us, he felt that they would have to throw, especially early in this game, because of the style of defense that Jim Knowles plays where he's attacking. And they have. They're 120 yards through the air, only 16 on the ground. Brooks has some space in the middle and muscles forward for about five. Well, this, I think this offensive line is really prone. I mean, it's been an area over the years. It's why all the skill guys get most of the attention. Anybody who really follows Oklahoma would tell you the offensive line and how physical they have been over the years uh, has been incredible. And this year, it was a group that had to gel. They've had some injuries. They've had some new faces. And late in the year, you can start to see them kind of putting it together and playing with more continuity because of the obvious experience. Brooks in the flat. Has a couple excellent blocks, makes the cut. Kennedy Brooks may track him down at the 45-yard line, but a big play out of the backfield and a whiff by Thomas Harper there. Well, wa watch the wall that Harper runs into because Stockner gets out there. You also see Hall, and he had Kennedy Brooks man-to-man. -man. And so by creating that, that wall for him to have to work through, it gave Brooks enough room to catch the ball and then have enough room to be able to get upfield and, and pull away. Not used as a receiver that often. Typically, that's Eric Gray in that role. Just the sixth catch for Brooks. They fake it to him. Fire down the middle. And it's Dogner running free. And the H-back into Oklahoma State territory. But when you come downhill, you're going to be aggressive. Be careful. Watch him hesitate and then get behind you. Watch the little hesitation. I'm just blocking. Nope, I'm going behind you. Good job of baiting the safety, a veteran safety. And then getting behind him. And I love how that time Caleb Williams helped sell that by being patient before he made that throw. It's all about the H-backs tonight. Not look to feature the wide receivers yet. Working down the middle of the field. Oh boys crowd the line. Brooks gets through that run. Blitz breaks a tackle in the clear and now muscled out at the 11-yard line. See, you go back to that last play. By running that play, not only is it successful, now I'm a safety. Now I got to be a little bit leery. Instead of just coming downhill quickly against this run game, now I got to worry about play action. And now by sitting back, now you can go back to your bread and butter, physicality, running the football, and trying to win the line of scrimmage. That run puts Brooks over a 1,000 yards for the season. The third time running back has done that in his Oklahoma career. First down outside the 10. Brooks has it again. That time smashed right at the line of scrimmage. As Brooks joins guys like Damon Parker, the great Adrian Peterson, Samaji Piran. And that's a pretty exclusive club. Three thousand-yard seasons. Of course, Brooks opted out, did not play in the 2020 COVID season. But he has been a serious force in these Bedlam games. Hurt the Cowboys big time in 18 and 19. 160 plus in each of those two games. Gray is in for him on this second and ten. Williams checks it down underneath in this all wrestled down by Taylor. Third down coming up. Well, it's getting feisty. Darby and Harper join. Yeah, in front of you is Darby. Yeah. Harper. Poor photographer paid the price. Man down. He needs six here in third down. Important sequence. Gray is the tailback. Three men to the right. They throw back to the left. One on one jump ball, and it's broken up. Trying to get the ball to Jaden Hazelwood and Jarek Bernard Converse. 
the most targeted defensive back in coverage, made a nice play, and here comes the field goal team. Well, he loses him. He, lo he put his hand on him, and then he got behind him. The reason they like to go to uh, Hazelwood down here is he's 6'3". Ball's thrown pretty, pretty well, but give Bernard Converse credit. Never quite gave up on the play and eventually got a hand in there to be able to knock it away. Hey, Berkovich was ultra-reliable to the last couple of games. He missed two wide right in the loss to Baylor. Doink to chip shot off the left upright last week. Need to make to get back some of that confidence and drives that one through. So Oklahoma, another long drive, but he settled for three. And the Cowboys lead is four. This is why Lincoln Riley was losing his mind at that timeout. Yeah, I mean, it, this happens so fast. You know, you're wondering, is that pass interference bill the, the left hand, though, right? Yeah, he's got a restriction with the left arm that's forcing the receiver only to go up with one hand. That's not mutual combat. And, that's restriction. He's just livid. And restriction is what I think Lincoln Riley, I mean, he, he worked the officials over and given some demonstration during that whole break. Carefully and to I, demonstrate. Don't you put your hands on the yeah, official. Yeah. But I think he has a, Bill, after looking at that second shot, you could really see the hook there with that left arm. I would have su easily supported a pass on the first call. And this is a short kick. They keep it away from Presley, and that's Richardson knocked down at the 28-yard line to Chris Felica. The Bear with our Affleck trivia question tonight. Chris? Test your little knowledge here about the recent college football playoff history with tonight's Affleck trivia question. Oklahoma 10th, Oklahoma State 7th this week. What is the lowest ranking entering championship Saturday for a team which went on to reach the CFP? So basically, we'll be, basically we'll be looking six. at Tuesday's ranking. Uh, Ohio State was 6 in 14. I, want, I think. First year of the playoff. Yeah, and they went by TCU and Baylor. I'm going to say. Jones I, stepped in the Big Ten Championship. They were yeah. there like 16th when, they, when the first rankings came out. They were way yeah. down there, I think. Yeah. Sanders on the run, and the ball batted down. Just rejected by big Isaiah Thomas, senior from Tulsa. Isaiah Thomas is a very gifted athlete that can play inside and outside. 11 and a half tackles for a loss there. He's obviously just. Where the awareness there and the length to be able to go up at 6-5 and, and bat that ball away. But he can play inside. And they, they've used him all over the place right now playing on the edge. Oh, look at all that pre-snap movement. Center defense shifting around. Sanders rolls that side and fits it into a nice window. Finding space in the zone there was Tay Martin. So when Oklahoma moves three times, what do you, what do, you do? You just roll away from it. Don't worry about protecting yourself. Get out away from that pressure. And what a throw there between three Sooner defenders. Zone coverage. Nice job of settling there by Tay Martin. And a good throw by Spencer Sanders. You can see the relationship and the trust there by a couple of veterans. I thought they were a more ball control and defense kind of team these days. And change the pattern. And this is Presley, uh, the electric kick return for a touchdown. Moves the ball back into OU territory. Mike Gundy gets into a huge rivalry game, and he just can't help himself, right? Big stage. Been winning with defense and running the football, and he says, nah, not in Bedlam. We're swinging for the fences. Play action, slant, and the ball batter away. Broken up nicely by Woody Washington. And a fly comes in very late now. Thrown by the back judge. This will not be pleasing to Riley, who was upset about the non-call. It's his receiver. I think it's the same call. I think the opposite hand from the hand that the defender Washington used to deflect the ball. I think the right arm this time gets around Pass the receiver. Defense, number zero. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Carries an automatic that, that, that first Lincoln's down. saying, guys, that's exactly what happened to my guy. Watch his right arm. Left arm works the football, right arm wraps the arm of Tay Martin. We refer to that as a hook and turn. Hook and turn, there it is. Fresh body is for the OU defensive front. Three backups in there. Oklahoma State threatening again. Three receivers stacked to the left. And they get the ball around. A flag is down. Catch made by Presley, who's wrestled down at the 34. Just a free play there. Oklahoma jumped. 
Boy, they are moving a lot up front. A lot of stunts, a lot of pre-snap movement, trying to affect Oklahoma State, not offensive lines communication. Offside defense, number 96. In the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty. First down. It's this movement before the ball. You know, you think, why, why, why are these guys doing that? Well, they go from an odd look to an even look, and anytime they move as a group, it affects what that center is calling out to communicate what they need to do, whether it's pass protection or combination blocks in the run game. That's Alex Grinch has been doing that since he was at Washington State as a defensive coordinator. First and five now. Sanders keeps it and doesn't get the blocks he needs. Flying in to make the play is Turner Yell from his safety position. Yeah, he does a nice job. They're, they're actually rotating and moving. Keep an eye on him. He comes all the way over because of the motion, and his eyes are in that backfield anticipating a run. You know, they missed him this year. This secondary is buttoned up now because they're healthy. Turner Yell comes back, and it allows the others to move around. Sanders takes off, escapes the pocket. Sprints straight down the field and dives for a first down inside the 25. 18 runs of 10 plus yards this year. That's a lot for a quarterback. Again, the scouting report had to say three is a factor, especially on third downs where you can scramble. Nobody there in the, in the middle of the defense. Playing with tempo and in the flat, it's Warren. They didn't really account for him. They still don't have him to the ground. Finally, after an eight yard gain, tackled at the 14 by Washington. Well, Oklahoma State is not only having success, they're, they're doing it with the tempo to impact what Oklahoma can do to settle in and make adjustments. They don't look settled in at all. No, Warren no. spins free of a tackle. It's first and goal. You, you know you have a defense in trouble when they're looking over to the sidelines. They're trying to get substitutions. You got guys with hands on their hips trying to get on the same page. It's been this way most of this first half. This is not what the scouting report showed of Sanders in this offense from most of what you've seen all year. But this is Bedlam. Expe right. The unexpected, right. everybody says, right? That's right. First and goal, a chance to build the lead to the 11 if they can get the ball in the end zone. But Warren is smacked immediately. This big Perry and Winfrey, the senior nose tackle. Yeah, it brings a lot of energy and passion to his play. Yeah, it, it does a good job just getting off the block. I mean, that, that's really what he's known for. Came over last year as a junior college player and kind of exploded on the scene as a first-year guy. Now a guy that they kind of count on in the interior using his hands and quickness. Sanders has time and he has space and takes off and is going to be slammed down. Brian Asamoa, number one tackler on this defense, All-American type level of play from this guy. He got the quarterback that time. Yeah, the, the big adjustment that Alex Trench is going to have to make at some point is they're going to, there has to be more of an awareness to Sanders and what he can do running the football. I told you he may run it 12 to 15 times tonight. So far, it's just six carries. Interesting call here now, Kirk. Third and goal from the four. Three receivers split wide left. And they give it to Warren, and the Sooners all over him. Nick Benito flew in, dropped him back at the 10, and here comes a field goal attempt. It looked like a miscommunication on the right side of the offensive line. Wilson, a right tackle, he goes out wide. Watch him move out to his outside. Benito goes underneath him, and nobody picks up the most gifted front player that, that OU has. I mean, you got to be aware of where 11 is, but uh, Wilson moves to his outside, making it easy for Nick Benito to come up underneath and make a tackle for a loss. Tanner Brown, the Californian, is very, very reliable inside 40 yards. Knocks that one through. So Oklahoma State back up by seven. Saturday Night Football, presented by Capital One on ABC, is brought to you by General Mills. This football season, it doesn't matter where you're watching or how you pregame. We are all tailgate nation. So let's prep your home field with the ultimate game time game plan, including tasty recipes and savings at wearetailgatenation.com. Those are the two previous top ten matchups in Bedlam history. 84, Sooners had the answer. Then in 2015, 58. 23, Oklahoma, a resounding winner. 
A lot of history against Oklahoma State. They would like to re-script that tonight. This is enormous for them. Yes, they've clinched a spot in the Big 12 championship game, but if they can win, besides bragging rights, besides paying back the Sooners for all the misery, they would get Baylor instead of a rematch in Arlington. And that matters. And keep themselves alive for not only a Big 12 championship, but, but also a shot to get to the playoffs. Hard hit on Gray. He is smacked at the 18. Cowboys special teams strong so far. Big edge. Well, let's talk about Caleb Williams here. Early in the game, a lot of pressure. And I think it caught him off guard. He was just kind of settling into the game. They were coming from a lot of different spots. And then I think you saw him start to see the pressure, find the one-on-one -on -one matchups. And once he found the matchups, it was about just getting the ball out and letting your receivers win. Look at that pressure. Doesn't let the pressure get to him, puts the ball up where Stonger can make a play on it. And that's been the adjustment. Quicker passes and moving the launch spot where he's throwing the football instead of just sitting in that pocket, sometimes getting him out on the edge. From the pocket, launches downfield, and it's incomplete. Try to find Trayvon West. Haven't really been able to get the ball to Jaden Hazelwood or Marvin Mims, the, the speedy edge players. Mims is the real deep threat in this offense. Yeah, I mean, you can get the ball downfield to, to uh, Mims, to Woods. Like you said, Mario Williams has that ability. So far, he's taken some shots with West. We've seen Stogner get some one-on-one -on -one chances. Hall also has been a good target for him. Second and ten, three-man rush, plenty of time. Williams finds a hole in that zone and gets it to Hazelwood, who makes the catch right at the marker. It's a first down. Yeah, when, when they don't bring that pressure, they're, they're not obviously putting that the same kind of heat on Caleb Williams. And I love that he's kind of waiting and being patient. And then he shows you the arm strength as Hazelwood that time just sat in the hole of the zone. And can Riley communicating with him up top in about the 15 yard line. Big cushion on the right. Williams pressured. Buying time. And is run down. Made a dangerous throw on the sidelines. Coming after him was Devin Harper, full speed, and Williams hit the deck. Check in with Kevin DeGandhi for an update. Chris, now for our Dr. Pepper Fansville studio update. Number six, Notre Dame on the farm, taking on Stanford. Jack Cohn to George Takis, Boog. And one thing about it, Notre Dame has a plethora of tight ends, and he finds one. Two touchdowns for Cohn right now. They're up 17-0 Irish. Back to Chris and Kurt. We've experienced that Thanksgiving weekend crowd in Palo Alto when the Irish come in there. It's yeah. intimate, usually. Yeah, yeah, that's a good word for it. Notre Dame trying to finish 11-1, and one. of course, very much stay alive in their CFP conversation. On second and ten, Brooks has got it, and they give him the edge. And he's off and running. Finally pulled out out near midfield. Nice job by watch Jordan Hazelwood work on just kind of help seal the edge up at the top. Does a nice job bouncing right around that block, and then that's a tough tackle. You know, safety coming up against the size of Kennedy Brooks, 215 pounds, running at full speed. He can either run over you or make you miss. Time made Harbor Peel miss. We need two more for Brooks, who's had a solid first half, 53 yards rushing. Short throw. Hazelwood wrestled down after about a three-yard gain. Holly? Well, guys, it's really remarkable. Kennedy Brooks, as you know, sat out all last year, opting out due to COVID concerns, but he did not stop working. We've told the story before, but he got up at 5 a.m. every day, would do two-a-days, whether it was footwork, speed drills, and then he would do a workout in the weight room. He kept working every single day, so when he came back, he hit the ground running. It did take him a couple of games to get into it, but he is at prime form right now. Really proud of this young man, how he kept his work habits, even though he that out. Good point, Holly. Physically, he's as bad as he's ever been. And in the backfield, Williams kind of hesitated, and he'll be trapped for a two-yard loss, and now it's third and long. Great job up front, getting off of blocks, a play-action look. Got pressure from the outside. Saw the freshman Oliver work around. Then he had to step up, and look at the interior. Good job of the big fellas being able to get off of their blocks. Ask C, 99, right there to bring him down. Also ran into you know, you know, 320-pounder there. See if Jim Knowles brings heat. 
Butler sits back, rushes three, drops eight. They bring some pressure off the edge. Suter's trying to run into it, but Brooks is tripped down for another loss. That's Tyler Lacey, the best pro prospect on this defense with the tackle. How about him? I mean, he's just collapsing. I think he's expecting run. Watch, or pass, rather. Watch, Chris. He's thinking Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams, and then he gets around the pulling guard, Murray, and throws that big left arm and trips up Kennedy Brooks. Seeing the defense, it is among the best in tackles for loss right near the top all season long. They had two back-to-back -back tackles for loss when the Sooners were threatening. Drive is snuffed out. Presley waves for the fair catch at the 14-yard line. So 3-0-2 to play before halftime. Pokes will try to add to a seven-point lead here in Stillwater. Capital One halftime report just uh, minutes away. Booker McFarland, Kevin Nagani, great environment. Still, what are your thoughts so far? Well, Caleb Williams started slow. Now he's picked up. It's going to be up to that Oklahoma State defense. Can they get a stop? That's what the side of the ball they have to lean on. A rivalry weekend is the best. It First was time we had overtime <laughs> in the Iron Bowl. Highlights coming your way, plus uh, two stunners in the Big Ten. Back to Chris and Kirk. Highlights coming your way. Yeah, guys, just an amazing day. Look forward to catching the folks up at halftime. Meanwhile, the folks. Getting aggressive here, and they get it to Jaden Bray, the freshman from Norman, who makes a play in the first down of the 30. Yeah, they, I, I think Mike Gundy feels that he's got a really good young group, and he thinks that eventually they'll get back to, to being the explosive offense. Again, coming into this weekend, they weren't necessarily that kind of offense tonight. They've shown that, but he loves these young freshman receivers with Green and Bray and, and others. Keeper. Sanders knocked down. Well, they punted quickly in their first possession. Then Kirk touchdown, touchdown. Got the kickoff for a turn for a touchdown. Field goal on the last drive. They've been motoring all over the field tonight. Yeah, and, and they're doing it very fast. You know, they're they're trying to put this Oklahoma defense on his heels and they're doing a good job of it. Second and seven. Sanders felt the pressure, steps up and throws a low bullet incomplete. Say Martin tried to make a tough catch pretty well covered by Washington. It's third and seven. Wow, he just missed that. I mean, he had it. He, he stepped up very nicely. He had a little bit of pressure from the out to his right by by Jalen Redman and just missed the throw. And a one on one matchup middle of the field. He had separation from Tay Martin. Martin has three catches and a touchdown in the first half. Lined up to the right. Three man rush, plenty of time. Delivered in traffic, and it's intercepted by Washington. He's got a convoy down the sideline. Washington leaps into the end zone. Pick six suitors. They're talking about it. Hold on now. They're talking about did he step out? And. The spot may come back outside the 15. We're going to take a look at this. Whirling on the field is an interception. First down, Oklahoma. Well, it clearly is an interception. Just make sure that he did step out of bounds. Washington well, is such an injury plague season. Chris, I think what he saw on third down is he looked out and he felt that he saw man to man because of the square shoulders from the corner. But instead, he drops to zone. And when he drops to zone, he's right in the way and able to step it up. See, he thought he was in man to man. He thought he was eliminated with that outside receiver. Good job of disguising that by Woody Washington. And then he steps, comes out of man. He's in zone, steps right in front of the throw, and then he's down the sideline. Steps out of bounds right there. Definitely stepped out. So the Sooners are set up at the 14-yard line. Momentum changing play near the end of the half. And Williams back pedals and throws it to the 11-yard line. That's Hazelwood has been kind of the underneath target tonight. Well, this is a turning point in the game. Oklahoma State's offense was doing everything it pretty much they wanted, dictating things. And one critical mistake in their own territory, and Caleb Williams has a chance to tie it before the half. 21st takeaway by the Sooners. They lead the conference in a rare pick thrown by Sanders. Play action, long throw, jump ball in the end zone. And that's Hazelwood this time. He does draw 
allow the pass interference flag from Christian Holmes. Now these Oklahoma State defenders, when they've been one-on-one, -on -one, have struggled to find the football. This time again, Holmes never turns his head around. It's a slot fade again. They continue to go to this play because they love the matchups. And again, we see an Oklahoma State defensive back not no, really get lost in where he is in coverage and not locate the football, and then he's in no man's land. I'm not sure why there's a long we've got two with we, the officials. We've got oh, two, two flags. flags. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely in the end zone, which would spot it at the two. There's yeah. one back in the backfield. There are fouls by both teams on the play. Pass interference, defense, number zero. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 56 of the offense. Those fouls offset will replay the down. It's the guard, Chris Murray, who said got a little too fired up there. He shoved the man to the ground. That's a little ticky tack. Yeah, I... I didn't agree with the with that call. I thought we had a pass interference. I I was very surprised that they called that on Murray. Ball was out and he kind of knocked the pass rusher down, but it didn't look like much. So second and seven again. Woods goes in motion. Brooks has the football knocked down after about a two yard gain. Watch 56. This, this is the play on Murray. This is the call. He, the, the defender went airborne, and then he comes down. Okay, I, again, I, Bill, I, I don't know how you feel about those. I mean, I, I know it was late, but I... When a player's on the ground, yeah. and then you attack him on the ground, that is a personal foul. Really? I didn't see... I saw the initial push. I didn't see him go land on the guy. Yeah. We can't do that anymore? You can't land on him? Maybe in your area. But not <laughs> Third and six here. Final minute of this first half. Williams once again. Jump ball end zone. Battle. Catch made. Touchdown. Braden Willis. And the Sooners win a battle on the edge. And cash in that interception. Chance to tie things at halftime. They continue to attack the Oklahoma State defenders in the red zone and keep doing it because they continue to get look at him at the line of scrimmage he's lost he's lost at the line of scrimmage he has no chance wills gets behind him the eyes go into the backfield by bernard converse but he loses touch and he's in man he loses touch with where that receiver is you're going to see caleb williams every time they get down the red zone they're going to continue to go after these defensive backs because they're not matching up well in man coverage willis a big bodied 6-4 guy senior from arlington his second touchdown of the season what a momentum change cowboys offense was humming and Sanders gets fooled, Washington with the pick, and very quickly, Oklahoma has charged back. Burkich can convert. They'll get the football to begin the third quarter in a tie game. How about the placement of that football and the, the, the receiver going up and high-pointing it? Caleb Williams is back on track tonight. We're tied. So Braden Willis works to the fade to the outside. And what you're going to see, so I want you to watch the, the corner's eyes. And the reason he's not locked in is because he's got help from the safety coming over top. But it's so tight. And the safety has so far to go. I'm just surprised you didn't see the corner get his hands, Bernard Converse. But what a catch and what a, what a placement by Caleb Williams. You got Williams. the right there? Yeah. Mike Hawk, who helps us with our information, helping the officials make the call. <laughs> yeah, the SID the pro you. director. He's fired up. He loved that call. Short kick bounces, got to field it, just batted out of bounds very smartly by Dominic Richardson. Back to the Bear, I, I think you're on to something with the, the answer to the Affleck trivia question. It's a short history of the playoff here, Bear, so you, you kind of narrow things down. You can't go back to 1850. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, you do. stay like 1980s and beyond, I got a chance, Bear. Well, the... the I might be wrong. Well... Uh, it, it, it is recent, obviously, and tonight's the answer to tonight's Aflac trivia question is sixth. Two teams have been sixth. 2017 Georgia. Georgia. 2019 Oklahoma. Oh. You mentioned, you mentioned Ohio State. Ohio State was fifth, remember? Okay. They, they were fifth, moved up, sandwiched in between TCU and Baylor. 
And then the big 59 to nothing mm -hmm. Big Ten Championship with Cardell Jones and against then, Wisconsin. And then, then 2017, Georgia beat Auburn in the uh, SEC title game. OU, That's right. OU 19, that great uh, Baylor Big 12 title game. Yeah. Georgia lost to LSU. Utah lost that night before to Oregon. So, uh, yeah. OU wound up jumping up. There. Jake Fromm and Georgia avenged that loss to Auburn. They sure did. Well, there was a batted forward, so that is a penalty on that kickoff that bounced. Don't know that it's a, a huge deal here. Oklahoma has one timeout, and Gundy, you'd think at this point, especially seconds. off that interception, yeah. the last throw by Sanders will just be Th very does cautious Does that interception here. second half make him go back to again? I think he's going to go with what, what got him here tonight. I think he's going to continue to be aggressive. And Warren knocks down. Yeah, I don't know. He was accused of being too conservative against Oklahoma times in his career. He's pretty sensitive about that. He says, no, actually, we're more wide open against the Sooners than we typically are against yeah. other opponents. That, that's certainly been the case today. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you look at the film of the last four, five, six weeks, and they, they played to their strengths, which, again, has been that defense and running the football and just playing smart, trying not to turn it over on offense. But they came out with Pistol Pete. With the revolvers going yeah, tonight. Yeah, but now OU's offense, they've got 261 in the first half. Cowboys have just been giving up 268 for the game. And the H-backs for Oklahoma, those big physical receivers, a pair of touchdown catches from Williams. And we are deadlocked in this crucial CFP elimination game with Big 12 championship game implications. Capital One halftime report is coming up right after these messages. 24 apiece in Bedlam. ESPN, home of the college football playoff semifinals. Friday, December 31st on ESPN. Run it. Wild and exciting day in college football. And now, prime time in Bedlam. Welcome back to Saturday Night Football. This is my Capital One and this presentation of the Big 12 on ABC. 24 apiece, one half to decide. The other half of the Big 12 Conference Championship game. Playoff implications for the CFP as well. Chris Fowler, Kirk Curb Street. So much for this being an atypical Bedlam game. We get at 476 yards offense, the kind of game Mike Gundy did not want to be in. Really? Well, yeah, I mean, he said we're not, we're just not equipped right now to get into a shootout, especially against Lincoln Riley and the OU offense. And, and here we are in a shootout. So what's going to happen here in this second half? He, I thought he made an interesting comment to Holly when he walked off with her, mentioning we're going to pretty much go with, you know, even though the interception happened, we got to keep going with what we've been doing. So I think they're confident that they can move the ball against the Sooners defense. And here comes the return. Hesitation and a slip on the cut by Marcus Major, the running back. But that was fighting spirit moment, Kirk. How well the H-backs have played in this Oklahoma offense. Yeah, they're leading the, the Sooners in receptions. And he spread it around to Jeremiah Hall. You know, look at all that room to run. You think about the receivers trying to maybe get vertical, but instead we've seen Hall, we've seen Austin Stogner go up and make a play where he high points the ball up and over a defender who never locates the ball. Brayden Willis also, nice job. It's a great throw. Goes up away from the defender and able to come up with it. Three touchdown passes for Caleb Williams in the first half. This is Brooks turning the corner. And uh, just getting into Holly and see what she learned at halftime. Well, guys, talking to Lincoln Riley, he loves that H-back tight end matchup right now. He said, we found some matchups, and they're in our favor. Oklahoma State hasn't adjusted yet, and they are going to keep hitting those. Jeremiah Hall, Austin Stogner, and others. Also, he said the better thing they've got to do against Spencer Sanders and that offense of Oklahoma State is contain the quarterback. He said, we're rushing the lanes, rushing past him. We've got to do a better job of containing him so he's not hurting us on those QB scrambles. That's good analysis from Riley. On second down, Williams back pedals, scans, and now just scampers out of bounds at the 18-yard line. It'll be third down. You know, Lincoln Riley, he's got that little play sheet that a lot of the air raid coaches have. You know, you see some of these coaches in the NFL and college. I mean, it's, it's huge, right? Look, look at his play sheet. Pretty animated play caller for such a little sheet, you know? He gets crazy over there trying to get the attention of Caleb Williams. I think he still likes the air raid label, though. He does. No, he's not air raid. I'm saying when he yeah, came up right. as a player and then as an, as an early assistant. No, he's definitely not uh, an air raid coach at this point. It's part of the system, but not completely. Third down, Williams. 
Has to avoid some pressure. Now tries to make the play with his legs. Can he get the corner? He can. It's a first down. They finally get him at the 24. Harper, but they move the sticks. Well, let's give the offensive line a lot of credit here. You saw a little bit of pressure from Brock Martin on the left, where he gets down. He submarines the offensive tackle, Harrison. But other than that, I mean, he keeps this play alive. And then the athletic ability to speed the pull away from Devin Harper. So good coverage downfield, but you better spy and be aware of Caleb Williams. As he can take it 65, 70 oh, yards. Right. Done it numerous times this year. Brooks on the delay. Gets around the corner. Kennedy Brooks with a big play in the running game. Still almost fought through that ankle tackle. Finally, Bernard Converse got him to the ground, but they're... The Oklahoma State fourth. Right. Left tackle Swenson gets around, does a good job, just gets in the way, kind of eats up the linebacker Rodriguez. And this is where Brooks is dangerous. Just a little hesitation, times up the counter play perfectly, and then gets north and south and gets downhill in a hurry and uses his speed and physicality at 215. Brooks went over 1,000 yards for the season in the first half, close to 100 tonight. 94. Good patience there. Carries. And straight back, zips the ball into traffic. But that's Stogner coming down with the catch. He eventually did, but he was out of bounds, I think, by the time he possessed the ball. He had juggled it. He did not complete the catch. Har good luck. Harvell Peel is fighting for the football. He, you saw the ball go up in the air after he went out of bounds. Just a good, really good look at it. He's got possession for a second. I'll watch if you continue to watch the football. Kind of pulls away. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. What do you think, Bill? Uh, it initially looked like he was had the foot down inbounds, but he lost and bobbled. Incomplete pass. I like the call. Second and ten. Williams back pedals and just throws it away. All that pre-snap eye candy didn't fool the Cowboys, and Walter Shy came on the pressure. Yeah, good recognition. Part of that defense sitting back a little, little chirping, making sure everybody's on the same page here with Holmes and Hazelwood. <laughs> All right, now third down. Remember, we saw him scramble on a previous third down. Do they spy here? They bring pressure. I would spy. Yeah, these backers, right now they're out in coverage, but somebody's got to come down and keep an eye on the quarterback. Williams. Thought about getting away and delivered a low throw. Didn't complete. No chance for Michael Woods to make a play. And it's fourth down. Now he, he had a chance to consider it. Nobody did spy him. He steps up away from the pressure. If he decided to take off and run, I, I honestly think he picks up the first down. Or he's got a really good chance. And instead, he's rushed the throw to Woods off balance. And it goes kind of goes uh, submarines to receiver. Turk to punt. Presley had the kick return of 100 yards for a touchdown in the first half. Back to receive this punt and waves for a fair catch at the six. First, second half possession for Spencer Sanders and the Pokes coming up. Want to tackle your fitness? Hey Siri, tell me more about Apple Fitness Plus. The students came back from their Thanksgiving break. Paddle people there in the Moss student section brought to you by Taco Bell. Student section sauce is the hashtag. ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. So Sanders and the Pokes got to be careful here. Backed up at their eight-yard line in this tie ball game. And the ball comes out on the ground. A fight for it at the goal line. No signal yet. Safety. Oklahoma State got the football back. Dominic Richardson may have recovered it, but this, Oklahoma takes the lead and the safety. Chris, Chris, this is why there's so much potential with Perrion Winfrey, the, the, the nose guard defensive lineman for Oklahoma. Look at eight right in the middle, get the push. Look at the power. And he just tackles the ball carrier before he even had the football. He tackles the lineman. He tackles the ball carrier. Everybody is going down, and the ball is loose. Looked like the Sooners would jump on it, but Wilson somehow comes up with it. 
as the progressive pylon cam ball punched out right there. Oklahoma State very fortunate the Sooners didn't fall on it for a touchdown. Jalen Redmond, 31. I couldn't tell if he was close to being offsides or offsides. He he got a quick get off on the football. I don't know if maybe he, maybe he did not cross the line of scrimmage. That's what that's Mike Gundy saying the same thing with Jalen Redmond. He did look to the naked eye live that they had jumped off. Yeah. Let's take another look at it here. So that's, that's what they're fired up about. Watch, watch right here. I don't know if he actually crossed, Bill. What do you think? He started to move, but I don't see him in the neutral zone at the snap. So okay. I have him clean. It's the first lead for the Sooners tonight. Boy, what an enforcer there by Winfrey. And just as you said, be careful deep in your own territory. Number eight takes over. Watch his watch his power. Bull rush. So turnovers for the Cowboys the interception late in the first half the fumble in their first series of the third quarter Now they got to kick it back to Williams down by two and all of a sudden there is a hush in Boone Pickett Stadium Gray from the 18 at a little crease and spins to the 40 Time for the Pokes defense to kind of earn their stripes here and live up to their reputation. Good year providing aerial coverage, making the plays that move you forward. Good year, more driven. Yeah, I mean, Chris, the open of this broadcast, we put a defensive graphic up, and it, uh, almost every category, whether it's third down defense or against the run or total defense, score of points allowed, they're number one or two in the nation in almost every category. And tonight, it's it's not been the kind of defense we've seen all year now the skill level and the competition has gone up but this is uh this has been a very different vibe and feel from the Pope's defense brooks yeah they've been more vulnerable to the run tonight than they have all season long nobody's really been able to run the football on i mean it, this defense is built to stop the run they want to make you throw the ball and then they want to get pressure. I mean, they lead the nation in sacks. They're just an aggressive attacking defense. And it's been Caleb Williams making the big plays through the air. Imagine there was a conversation in that defensive room about how to cope with the H-backs that you talked about. Williams pulls it. Wanted to launch downfield. And now checks it down off the hands of Brooks. Long throw. He had some space there. Should have made the catch. So at defense, it's known for it being aggressive and sacks and tackles for a loss. Instead, they say, you know what? Let's play coverage. Let, let, let's let him sit back in the pocket. Let's give him time. Let's take away everything downfield. And let's make him check it down. Sooners pretty respectable considering the Cowboys' defensive success on third down to four for ten. But they need ten here. But Marvin Mims had a quiet night. One reception for four yards. He's the big play receiver for the Sooner offense. You're right. And Williams looking to run for it on third and ten. And flying in from the edge was Devin Harper to knock him down. It's fourth down. Now there's eyes on a quarterback. You know, you know, you're thinking about him on third long, not necessarily running the football. You're thinking about him maybe taking off and scrambling, but instead he starts to run. Great recognition from one of the leaders and playmakers on this defense, Devin Harper. So now we call them out. They step up, get the ball back, get a three and out. That was an important stand because OU had the momentum. All of a sudden, the Cowboy offense is sputtering a little bit. Turk, high, good boot. And it's muffed. Ball rolling around in the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Boyles scooped it up. A special teams disaster for the Cowboys. And the man who was the hero in the first half with a 100-yard kickoff return Brennan Presley makes a crucial mistake there. And, the, and the watch him tr start to fall back on the football. He's got a defender coming down to hit him, the gunner. And he start instead of sit, sitting underneath the 
ball. You watch him go back. Now he's inside the 10-yard line. At that point, it's always safer to just let that ball go. But tremendous hang time to allow the gunner to get down there and a critical mistake there by Presley and the Oklahoma State special teams. At that point, if you're drifting back in that position in the field, better off just let it bounce yeah. and go in the end zone. What a turnaround. Safety, mistake, miscue on those special teams. And all of a sudden, nine. nine point Oklahoma lead. Great day for the Sooners. But most of the time, a letter rip. Touch it down, touch down, Oklahoma. Very simple. Oklahoma wins it. shift as Lincoln Riley's team trying to clinch a rematch against the Cowboys in the Big 12 championship game in Arlington next Saturday afternoon. Oklahoma loses Baylor which felt pretty good about things in the first half as Dave Aranda's team survived against Texas Tech. They had the head to head win against the Sooners. They would win the tie break but right now Oklahoma has scored 16 unanswered off Oklahoma State miscues in the last two pokes touches have been the fumble recovered for a safety and then the muff turned into a touchdown Curtis Wilson and the All-State bus is here with us what's the All-State celebration moment today now the All-State celebration moment has to be Michigan what they did in Ann Arbor today physically just too much for Ohio State at the line of scrimmage they wanted it more than Ohio State did in every aspect every phase of the game they were very well prepared Big day in Ann Arbor for their fans and especially for Jim Harbaugh and Hassan Haskins. 28 carries, 169. Look at that number at the bottom. Five touchdowns. He'll be remembered forever for that performance. Blake Quorum came, played a role today, but Haskins has really taken over since Quorum's injury. Michigan, Iowa for the Big Ten Championship. Now it's Winfrey storming in, and that time he's going to get the flag he wanted. He, he, got, he got excited about it the last play. Last time he was out there, I tell you what, man, he, he's providing a little bit of energy before, you know, in, during TV timeouts for this defense, but here he just gets an early start. Prior to the snap, offside, defense, unabated to the quarterback, number eight, five-yard penalty, still first down. Down to Holly. Well, guys, this Oklahoma State team is trying to get their bearings on the sideline after some crucial mistakes. It's seniors Josh Sills, Tay Martin, who are out on offense right now, taking long talks, saying, guys, we have got to start doing our job, get it together, calm down, and start dominating this football game again. Calm down. That's a, that's a good start. Things have gotten away from them very quickly. And that throw's picked off almost of the hands of Key Lawrence who jumped the route. Wow. Again, he sees man-to-man, -man, and they fall out of the man-to-man -man and go to zone. Look at the corner. He thinks it's man. He doesn't go downfield. He comes off with a receiver that's going downfield, and he baits Spencer Sanders again into throwing it into zone coverage right into the arms. Key Lawrence unable to hold on to it. It's a critical series. After that safety and after that miscue on special teams, they got to get it going here. Sanders trying to buy some time and slings it and the catch is made by Martin one of those seniors Holly was talking about he's new to this program Chris watch the seven play. watch seven slip out of the backfield Benito takes him away actually runs into defender but he's still there that's where Sanders wanted to go I thought he was going to give up on the play but he doesn't Sanders with the keeper there four yard game before Asamoah got him to the ground and now tempers flaring they got they got locked up on the tackle Asamoah and Sanders he kind of stepped on top of him over top of him and Sanders didn't care for it it's, it, at, it's after the tackle he kind of tries to get up but he steps over top of him and mm. gives him that mm -hmm. yeah yeah he actually elevated him off the turf look out Warren bust free and that's the spark that the Cowboys offense needs. Washington got him to the ground, but inside the 35. And he gets downhill. That's that's what Oklahoma State loves to see from Jalen Warren. 5'8", 215, low center of gravity. We've seen him bouncing it that time right into the guts and the teeth. 24-yard gain. He motions out now, and he 
pitch into the slot receiver Blaine Green and the freshman near the marker at the 25. This is what we really saw more of Oklahoma State in the first half. Not only success moving the ball, but going very, very fast and affecting Oklahoma's ability to just get lined up. Second and one. And Warren dropped behind the line. Quick penetration that time off the edge by Ethan Downs, a true freshman. Ethan Downs goes right around Birmingham, the left tackle. Watch on the far left. Goes outside and uses his hands and quickness to go underneath him. Right there. Little swim move. Uses his quickness and athletic ability. Pretty impressive from the, uh, the freshman, true freshman. Backup getting a chance to make a play. And it sets up third and four. You're in field goal range, but you think Gundy is taking two plays here to get to four yards. And it's Warren inside. He will not get there. Tackled at the 27. They'll need about three on fourth down. Coe and Downs again combining. They're using, rotating a lot of different bodies up there. You're going to send out the field goal team, Kirk. I think if he'd gotten positive yardage, if it was fourth and shorter, just a field goal here to try to get back within six. Stop the bleeding and get some points on the board. Around the UNLV transfer. He took over early October field goal kicking duties after Alex Hale struggled a bit. This from 44. And it's drifting and he missed it. Wide right just kind of fading away. And the Cowboys. Miss an opportunity to stop the Oklahoma run. The lead is still nine. Midway and Stillwater concern in the faces. The fans are the favorite here tonight. A selection Sunday in college football is December 5th. Exclusive reveal of the CFP semifinal matchups. We played in Arlington and down in Miami. Plus all the New Year's six matchups and the final top 25 rankings. 12 noon on ESPN and on the ESPN app presented by AT&T 5G. Look at this race. Did you see that? They've given the trophy to the young lady in the orange truck. Clearly, clearly she's off early a false start. two trophies and her dad, you see the, I gave you the cone there, the vision. Her dad or somebody told her go before the other two even took off. This carriage of justice here. Brooks. Knocked down after a three-yard game. This Oklahoma State defense again, Kirk, in a position needing a stop with the momentum from the side of OU big time. Yeah, they, they've got it. They, they did it the last time. And this defense has been the, the anchor for this team all year. Get into the second half. Oklahoma is going to start eating some of that clock up with this lead. Brooks. And they're able to step out of that tackle, dropped for a loss by Evers and Rodriguez, third and long now. Rodriguez has had such a great year. So many of these guys, you and I have been calling Oklahoma State games over these last three or four years. These guys were young freshmen and sophomores and playing, and now here we see them as seniors. And you play together for three years, and you get to stay in the same system with Jim Knowles. That's where you develop that continuity. Yeah, this is not indicative of how they played all year, but it's been a change the defensive culture at this school. Rodriguez and these other veterans very proud of that. Can they get off the field here? Play clock at four. Williams steps up against pressure and tries to escape. Lost the football. A scramble for it. And the Cowboys have it. The first takeaway of the night for Oklahoma State sets up the pokes in Sooner territory. Williams trying to make a play. Kirk just lost the handle. Yeah, and, and a give Jim Knowles credit here where he walked both his linebackers up free snap. And then it's a snap of the ball. He gave him pre-snap to post-snap look. Remember, Caleb Williams, a freshman, he shows pressure here and here. And then at the snap of the ball, he's going to take off. Caleb Williams looking right at them, expecting man-to-man. -man. Now they drop. And now all of a sudden, he starts to realize, look, he's got an open man here, but he's confused based on that movement. And now he's just holding on to the ball, nowhere to go, and it comes out. And Brock Martin, the senior, recovered it. Thomas Harper knocked it loose. Just the third lost fumble for the Sooners this season. And the Pokes make the pay. Sanders rolls back, wanted to throw to his left, and now has to escape pressure. Works hard for a four-yard gain. Asamoah got him down. You're right. He did. They were kind of setting up a screen to his left, but Oklahoma had it taken away. Pat Fields was there. 
And so he aborts. I, I thought he was going to get sacked. I mean, that, that, that looks like that's going to be a, about a seven-yard loss and instead turns into a three-yard gain. Heck of an effort for three Field yards. So the trainer tell, looks like he's okay. Delarian Turner yell, the starting safety. Looks like he's done for the night. So Oklahoma's secondary playing a little bit shorthanded at the moment. Second and seven. Sanders on the run. Has space. And is knocked down at the 30. It'll be third and short. Holly? Guys, well, Delarin Turner Yell came out of the locker room heavily limping at the half. Oklahoma doesn't disclose injuries, but he's on the sideline, hasn't played yet in the second half, doesn't look like he's ready to. So that means Justin Broyles is probably taking his close, and Billy Brown will come in at the nickel. Turner Yell, the top interceptor in the defense, as Warren hammers ahead for a first down. He's he feels crucial for, for Oklahoma State's yeah. offense. Oh, yeah, it's critical. And, and, you know, if you've watched Oklahoma State this year, Jalen Warren, as a senior, he's had some really good second halves where he just one of those backs that seems to get better as the game goes on and gets more physical as the game goes on. You feed him again, and that's Winfrey. Just clog things up and they'll knock him down behind the line. Hey, he is pushing people around in the interior of that offensive line right now. I think this is the guy that they wanted to see all year. You know, he has so much potential. It's just a matter of playing consistently. When he plays the way he's playing tonight, he's one of the top interior defensive linemen in college football. He says he's capable of playing with a lot of energy. He can take, take games over as he's doing tonight. Comes from Illinois, didn't grow up watching this rivalry, but he's like, wants to go out perfect against the Cowboys. Sanders, again, early pressure. They are coming after him. He's having a fight to escape, avoids the loss. But Panito came, I thought it was almost off sides right here. I mean, he got a heck of a jump, and it forces Sanders to have to come off the play. But again, the mobility and the athletic ability gives it a chance. The crowd's reacting to that. I think he just got off so quick that it looked like it was offside, but it wasn't. Just the sixth, third down the Cowboys tonight. They're just one of five. They need seven here. Again, it feels so important to cash in that rare takeaway. Last check of the sidelines. Play clock at four. In a hurry. They just get it off. And Sanders delivers into traffic. Knocked in the air and intercepted by Washington. His second pick tonight. That is a disastrous play. There's a flag after the pick. Washington will be uh, penalized for taunting. But he's got two picks tonight. Uh, he tried to squeeze that in there. He's just trying to make a play. That was a really tight window and a tough throw for Spencer Sanders, but I think he felt some urgency. Really on the field because is an interception down. after the play was over. Unnes unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number zero. That foul penalty will be half the distance to the goal. First down, Oklahoma. This is number zero's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game. Looks like Billy Bowen was in there, Kirk, defending the pass. But look how tight this throw is. I mean, he's got he's got a throwing window right here, but it's, it's going to be tight. I mean, that's a really tight throw. You can see Bowman gets his hand on it. That's what knocks it up in the air. And I think he felt like he needed to make a play there on third and seven. True freshman Bowman gets a hand on it, goes up in the air. Washington comes up with a pick. And another series where, Washington, where Oklahoma State doesn't come away with any points. Yeah, this is Washington. Yeah, there's the taunting right there. Let's Warren know. But a guy didn't have a pick this year. He's, he's missed eight games. He's hardly played. When he's healthy, it's a different secondary for Oklahoma. Brooks from the four wrestled down and another missed opportunity for Oklahoma State plus territory the last two series and this Oklahoma State defense we keep saying can they do it again you know the last two times they have they came up with a turnover the previous uh, drive they got a three and out now they've got Oklahoma pinned can they do it they're gonna have to keep battling here on this side of the ball to get Sanders the ball back Williams in his end zone, delivers into a tight window, and big Jeremiah Hall makes another play. H-backs still the main weapons tonight. Yep, and he's just, it's just a certain comfort level, it feels like, with Caleb Williams throwing to Hall. I mean, 
Again, he's very, very comfortable on the move. Had to get that ball in tight because the corner was coming over to try to dislodge that football from Jeremiah Hall. Porsche catch tonight for Hall. Just a sure-handed H-back that gets out there and finds those openings. Low snap. Williams getting some pressure and makes the late decision to throw, but it's low and behind the receiver. Now they brought the corner blitz. Nobody picked up the wheel route down that sideline where Eric Gray was going, but because of the pressure, Caleb Williams just could not set his feet and get that ball out to number zero at Gray down that sideline. Andrew Rame, their starting center, just can't go. He's been battling injuries. Congo, a senior, he's played a lot of football. Low snap that time. And now a misfire on the left side of that offensive line like Harrison. Yeah. Ball start. Offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Think about Oklahoma State, I, and I appreciate what Mike Gundy has done coming into this game with the aggressive mindset of trying to say, hey, we can attack this OU defense. But three turnovers now, and, and the miscue, you know, where, where they've had opportunities inside the red or the uh, plus territory and unable to come away with any points. But really, the turnovers are what you, you wish you could have back. Williams pressured, escapes somehow. A flag comes out very late. He dumps it down to Brooks, who makes a cut and has a first down out near the 40, but we'll check the penalty marker in the backfield. Yeah, I think it'll be a hold. What an effort by Williams to keep that play alive. I think he's going to go down in the backfield. Colin Oliver, we talked about this true freshman pass rusher from Oklahoma City, made another impact play. A terrific balance to stay up for the quarterback. During the play, holding offense number 54. The foul was half the distance to the goal. Replay, second down. 21 yard gain negated. He's Hayes, the guard guilty. Yeah, left guard, 54. Look at the effort there on the far left with Oliver. Caleb Williams gets that left hand down to keep the play alive, but 54 right in the middle of your screen. And Kirk Williams has really cooled off in the third quarter. One for six, 15 yards, but they've got those nine points off the safety and the buff punt for a touchdown. And now Brooks with a stiff arm gets the corner. Another flag as he's run out. Again, it's first down yardage and again, probably going to come back. Marker on the far side of the 28-yard line. Well, that, that was well designed in the interior. Mario Williams, the receiver, was blocking on the edge. During the run, personal foul, face mask on the offense, number four. The penalty is half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul and will replay second down. Watch the block here by the left tackle, Harrison. Watch the guards get up to the second level. I mean, that's perfect execution. And then there's four right there, just grabs on with his right hand onto the face mask and pulls down on Corey Black. But penalty is just killing Oklahoma. But boy, that, that, I mean, that's, that's Oklahoma running the football right there. Hat on a hat, giving Brooks enough room but then it's negated with the penalty there by the receiver. Yeah, two major penalties in this series. Now it's second and 18 back inside the 15-yard line. They bring pressure again. Williams is sacked back at the four. Malcolm Rodriguez like a missile get after the quarterback. Nobody came down to take him away. The right guard, Murray, stays out wide. Watch the right side of the offensive line. Nobody collapses down. It's an easy shot. You can see the speed of Rodriguez. But I, you would have thought it, uh, the guard would have stepped down to protect the inside for the quarterback. But now they're back where they started. Back on the inside. They're about right around the five-yard line in third and, and forever. And what he broken the school record for sacks in a season. 
Brooks kind of picks his way, and he is slammed down hard by Harville Peel, and the penalties kill the Sooners, and the Pokes make another defensive stand. Yeah, third straight time. They've, they've done their job getting off the field, kept Oklahoma, more importantly, in deep in their territory with the assist to some of those penalties, so they should get really good field position here to get the ball again back to Sanders. Michael Turk punting from his end zone. It was the really excellent hang time that created that high punt. It's a swirling wind. And Presley, who has a great play and a poor play tonight, that time makes an uneventful fair catch at the 41-yard line. Oh, so he had a tight game at half, and, and then the second half got started, and, and things started to go wrong for the Cowboys. They, they're just making mistakes. They had a safety. They dropped a punt inside their own 10-yard lines, picked up for a touchdown. They had a chance to get on the board and get a field goal and pushed right. And then Sanders trying to make a play on a third and seven, forces the ball into a tight window. Billy Bowman gets his hand on it, puts up in the air, and Washington intercepts it. So that's been pretty much the second half for Oklahoma State. Sanders slings it, and that's Martin. And a tight window there. You know, the Oklahoma offense didn't do much in the third quarter. After a first half, excellent special teams play by the Cowboys. It was a pretty disastrous third quarter. Looks like they got the playoff before triple zeros, and the long throw is dropped on the far side by Dominic Richardson. Nine zip edge for the Sooners in the third quarter. They'll lead by nine. Final quarter coming up after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Surprised they let him get the playoff in the first place. About two seconds late. Here we go, final quarter. And Oklahoma State's got some work to do. They're going to try to end this head-to-head -head misery against the Sooners. That's what you want. Bedlam, plan for a right to get to a Big 12 championship, maybe try to get to a playoff. Catch made, far side, green. It's true, Kirk. It's not just bragging rights. It's not all the personal stuff. It's not just to dictate your opponent next week. It's to basically stay alive for the CFP. And some things broke pretty well for Oklahoma State yeah. earlier today. An opportunity that doesn't come around very often in this you, program. And you know there's more chaos coming next weekend as well. Play action. Sanders loops it downfield. Diving play out of bounds. Jaden Bray laid out but was beyond the field of play. Boy, what a heck of an effort by the freshman. 6'2", 187 pounds. Ball just takes him out of bounds, but I love that he lays out, just never held on to it. It was out of bounds anyway, but it's one of those things as a teammate, you just love to see him giving every ounce of effort to try to make a play. They don't take a whole lot of downfield shots. They don't complete a whole lot of them by the standards of modern college football. Certainly a departure from years past for Oklahoma State. Casey Dunn took a chance there, and again, it's Winfrey getting in there. And Sanders escapes and will scamper out of bounds. It looked like about three suitors were offside. Now there's a flag on the near side. Uh, he, again, they're booing because it was, again, it, it was a false start. You saw how quickly he got in there. He's quick. Don't get me wrong, but he's not that quick. I think they're booing because the, the flag was pretty discreetly thrown. Yeah, near the sideline here. There, there he is. Offside, <laughs> defense, number eight. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Yeah, for a big man, he's got enough quickness without giving him a two-step head start to the backfield. Right. Yeah, the combination of power and quicks. Penalties, Kirk, really piling up now. Nine for Oklahoma. Here's Oklahoma State in plus territory again. Yep, exactly. Again, but can they cash in? Sanders has time. Again, launches downfield and laying out. Martin, does he have it? No, did not complete the catch. Washington in coverage. Martin thought he made a great catch. I did too. I mean, I, he laid out. He got his body and his arms underneath it the way he came down. Des Bryant thinks it's a touchdown, of course. Dave Bryant's wearing his jersey. But they're not going to give him the catch. 
going to have a couple really good looks at it. How again, another tremendous effort. Gets his body turned. Hold on now. Complete the process of the catch. Wow. But Bill. Ground eight in control. The point of the football hit the ground pretty hard there, The ruling Bill. of an incomplete pass is under further review. Replays taking a look at it here. What they're going to look at here is as he rolled over, how much did the ball move or did he still maintain control? Let, let's just say, for argument's sake, the initial part, when the ball hits the ground, that they'll, they'll rule that it did not affect the catch. Does he have the ball long enough? Bill, does he have it long enough before, before Washington eventually knocks it away? He's hitting the ground with his knee. The ball is is coming. Here's starting the first to move. right there. Well, let's just say, I just want to know if, if they don't rule that part in completion, does he have it long enough until finally you see Washington's hand knock it away? Once it starts to move, it, you've got to start the process of the catch all over again. So as he finishes rolling over and the ball comes out, yeah, but I, he, he's up, but he has, as you said, rolled over. Isn't that enough to. But he was bobbling it, it on the rollover. So you can look at it as the officials saw it in real time. It's tough. Wow, what a, what a play. And it's a huge replay review here. It's going to be third and five, like at the 43, if the incomplete call stands. Don Capital is the replay official up here. They've been taking their shots on the field. You know, they've had one-on-one -on -one chances, and they've been close. This time, really close. Call on the field of incomplete means there's got to be indisputable evidence to turn it over, though. Was there enough? As, he, as you said, Bill, it's a two-part review here, right? Does he control the ball well enough without the ground aiding, and then does he have it long enough? Yeah, and when he rolls over on his back, I see it After loose. reviewing the play, the ruling of an incomplete pass stands. So they didn't say confirm, they said stands. And a water bottle was thrown from the Oklahoma State huddle. It flew up in the air. I think it hit our our spider cam on the wire. It's going to be returned to the Oklahoma State sideline. Well, now you got to regroup. You know, if you're Oklahoma State, go back to that third and five. A couple of bottles have been thrown in the field. That's down uh, away from the team. So third and five here. Again, Oklahoma State threatening, but needing to cash in on these opportunities. Down nine, just to start here in the fourth quarter. Sanders legs, ability to run option, ability to scramble, always in play here. Delivers underneath. Martin makes the catch and makes the first down. Nice job after the catch. Key Lawrence was in position to keep him well short of that first down, but Martin frustrated maybe after that last drop where he didn't get the touchdown. He caught that football. He knew exactly where he needed to go for the first. And they try to get it to him again. You know, Martin's an interesting story. He's a guy that's been through a lot in his life. He lost his mom in high school. She died of a heart attack. Went up to play for Mike Leach at Washington State. Remember the program is undergoing some tragedies. There were the death of two players, including one player who took his own life. And Martin was his roommate, not at the time of that tragedy, but before. So in order to be closer to his daughter, who was in Louisiana, he's come back to Stillwater to play out his college career and has had a huge impact on this offense this season and tonight as well. Six catches. Option look, Sanders keeps it, makes a cut, first down, still running. Spencer Sanders all the way to the house. A crucial touchdown for Oklahoma State to fight back, 37 yards. You know, you get late in a game, in a rivalry game, this is where your playmakers and your veterans have to emerge and make a play. And that's what Sanders did here. Nice job of stretching the option and then what, using those blocks and finding the crease. And then how about how he got off of the, the would-be tackler and then accelerated those last 15 yards to the end zone. Very gifted. 
And the lead is now sliced to two. Look at the energy there from Sanders. They're right back in this game. Watch this play stretch. It's almost like an outside zone. Watch him use those linemen. Let them push those defenders to the sideline. And that's what I love. Comes off the tackle and accelerates to the end zone. That's vintage Oklahoma style. Right that quarterback, is. keeper, option, touchdown. Two-point game. Another fun one of the Bedlam series. Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One. 13.52 to go. A two-point game. Spencer Sanders. Nice job shaking off two interceptions, two questionable decisions, Kurt. Put his team in trouble, but that touchdown run, a big play. And now Sooners back to work in a two-point game. Tomorrow morning, Sunday NFL countdown on ESPN. Mac Jones profile. And on Monday Night Football, Seattle and Washington. FedEx Field. No oh, Peyton and Eli this week. They got a bye week. Regular Monday night crew. Steve Levy, Bruce Riddick, and Brian Greasy. It's game on now. Jorios Williams has really cooled off very, very little from the OU offense, especially the passing attack after halftime. They get it to Gray. It's a backwards okay. pass. The ball rolling, and it still hasn't got out of bounds. Finally booted out of bounds by Hazel. Well, you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> In, in a soccer game, that's a penalty. It, it, it negates the chance of a recovery, but that was a backwards pass. Trouble from the start, Kirk. Yeah, I mean, it starts with the lateral. I mean, that, that's where they're going to make sure that they're going to confirm. But he threw that from about the 19, and the ball landed around the 17 and a half. It's definitely a lateral. And, yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't know if Hazelwood played soccer back in his early days or what, but very instinctively just kicked the ball to make sure an Oklahoma State defender didn't get to it. There's the lateral. you, you got to act a little well, bit. Oh, you go look, down he's and like, just go down boom. and scoop it up with your hand and shovel it out of bounds. The ruling on the field <laughs> is that the pass was backwards, and it was illegally kicked at the eight-yard line. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. I mean, Chris Felica would down. appreciate his yeah. soccer. You just kind of tap in for an easy goal. Yeah, at this least is the wrong sport. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but I, all of what he just said was just a lot of bad for OU. The lateral kicks the ball illegally out of bounds, and now the Sooners are all the way back at the, about what the four-yard line. And they got the students. You got the paddle people pounding on that padding right behind him. This is as loud as it's been in a long time. Second and 31. Yeah, lost it down. And Oklahoma State wants the time to make their substitution because the Sooners did as well. This is a challenge for the poise of Williams right now. He's got the football. And tries to create some space. He's going to be dragged down on the edge. A flag is down again. That's going to be another tackle. It's going to be another hole. Penalties have been enormously damaging to this Oklahoma offense here in the second half. Yeah, he's looking over like, do you, you know, do you want to decline this? Because it's still going to be third and forever. Holding offense, number 54. Yeah, fly. smart. Result of the play brings up third down. Smart by Mike Gundy. Yeah, balls at the 12. They're getting all the way to the 35-yard line to avoid punting here. Yeah, I think it was Marquise Hayes, 54, on the far right of your screen. Again, grabbing on the outside of those shoulder pads in Jersey. Keep talking about how talented Caleb Williams is. We just want to remind everybody. It's a true freshman in this environment. Good point. And now a flinch. Sooners going backwards. It's not just the quarterback. It's even a seasoned offensive line can get rattled in this environment. Oklahoma State trying to build in this momentum shift here. Hey, man, I saw it today. I was standing on the sideline in the big house with Ohio State of Michigan. Those offensive tackles from Ohio State. You're out there on an island. Can't really hear what's happening with that clap. It makes you flinch. Makes you guess a little bit. Makes you uncomfortable. 
Oklahoma eight penalties in the first 17 minutes of the second half. Place has come alive here, Chris. Brooks. Throttled. Oklahoma will punt. And now a flag after the play. If there's a dead ball penalty against Oklahoma State, that would be crucial. I think it is. I think it's going to be on Devin Harper. 16. One of the leaders of this defense. Gave an extra push to Kennedy Brooks that forced him down to fall on his backside. Well after the whistle. Number automatic first down. Dead ball, automatic first down. If that's what the call is. That's such a part of rivalry week two, Kirk. This place is juiced up. You know the history between these teams. These fans rabid Oklahoma rattled and a mental mistake like that is going to give the Sooners a fresh set of downs and they're going to get some space not backed up against the goal line anymore well that is a watch 16 the push right there there is no foul oh. for unnecessary roughness it is fourth down wow upon further review Bill they have picked that flag up that is a huge judgment that push was totally unnecessary. Bill, this is well after the whistle. Yeah. I mean, they're blowing the whistle now. It's done. The play's over, and then this extra bang right there. 16 got away with one. How did they? How, how does that happen? When they throw the flag and then they get together, how, what would they say to say, oh, no, no, no? If I had the flag, I'd stick by it and dig my feet in and say, no, this yeah, is totally under. Right by you, right by the referee. Riley, for the umpteenth time tonight, is livid. Turk backed up delivers a deep punt and Presley has to backpedal all the way to the 33 yard line 53 yards and no return but folks get the ball down two. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Capital One what's in your wallet Good year on this mild night for Bedlam, providing aerial coverage with you for every mile on the road to greatness. Good year, more driven. Oklahoma State was reeling. Mistakes piling up. They were down by nine. But Spencer Sanders touched them out of the last possession. Oklahoma self-destructing with some penalties. Got a lucky break and a flag that was picked up. 53-yard punt. Sets up the Cowboys now at their 33. The Oklahoma State defense has done its job after halftime. They'll keep their team in the game and give the offense a chance. Sanders steps up. Ball is out, and it's recovered. But turnover avoided there. But Nick Benito using his speed to get around the corner and get to Sanders to knock that ball loose. This is what you're seeing now from elite pass rushers. They don't go for the body. They go for the football. Bring that right arm through and knock that ball loose and force Sills, the offensive lineman, to have to jump on it. First sack of the night for the Sooners. Just the 13th that the Cowboys have given up this year. Excellent pass protection. Mike Gundy's at the far 20. The ball's at the far right 30. You're right. He's at 50 yards from the play. Sanders checks it down. Warren cuts back. Another move and fights out for a first down across the 43. Nice job of just slipping him out, giving him room to work. None of the linebackers recognized that he was in protection. And Why is he so far away, by the way? He just slipped out. I don't know. He's just Why like, you know what? There? You know what? You guys do your thing. I'm just going to go over here and breathe. I'm just going to just. Is it to get dip, like a perspective from way yeah. down there? I'm sure it does. The headphones still work. No matter how far yeah, it is. It's just, he's way outside the team area. Uh, first down, Sanders. A screen, but the throw was low. Pressure from Benito again, and Warren couldn't come up with it. Holly? Well, guys, you're talking about how far away Mike Gundy is. He actually just came down to me on the 10-yard line and said, how about Des Bryant? He's just like a kid out here. Isn't he having fun? Like, Gundy's just down here chatting with us right now. It's, it's very fun to watch. Think about it, Holly, how many times he's been around this game, right? You talked about it earlier as a player, as an assistant, as a head coach. 31st time. He would love to have won more. He's 2-14 and yeah. 14 as a head coach against the Sooners. Second and ten. Sanders pressured again and delivers in and out of the hands of Blaine Green. There's a flag down again. 
right at the quarterback. Another hold. Seen a whole bunch of holds. Left tackle, Cole Burningham. Nick Benita's been a handful lately. Yeah. He He's, may have forced the hold. Yeah, he was going to get around hand. again, and Birmingham, instead of letting him get there, Holy he just brought offense, him down. Number 67, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Benito credited with 47 quarterback pressures. That's the tops on the team by far coming in tonight, and he's made an impact again. Well, he, he has elite get-off. I mean, he has a, a step where he's able to anticipate the snap count, and it puts a lot of heat on those offensive tackles. Teams try to run at him to negate that. He's not always successful. The time they double-team him, Sanders has lots of time, and the sideline catch made well short of the first down by Tay Martin. They get a good chunk of the yardage back, but it'll still going to be third and about eight. I feel like when this offense has their foot on the accelerator, they've been mo their most dangerous. When they've been able to pick up a first down, get their tempo going, get Sanders with the ability to run and throw. He's scrambling, he's running, he's doing different things. That, that's where they've had so much success. They need to pick up a first down to get that to get that momentum going. There's the clap. And again, it was Winfrey among others coming in. Sooners are signaling false start. I didn't see anybody from Oklahoma State move. Prior to the snap, offside, defense, number eight. Five-yard penalty. It's still third down. He's done that really loud clap a couple times. That at one time it did produce a false start for his offense. There, yeah, but there, there, it works again. Now these Sooners, that's one way to help your offensive line with Benito and Winfrey. Give them that hard, instead of the hard count, the hard clap to try to slow this Oklahoma pass rush down. This guy's Four, a handful of it is. Fourth time they jumped offside. Yeah. Now up, it's third up, three. Up to a 12 penalties on the night. Third down's been a struggle for the Pokes, but it's a lot easier when you only need three. And you try to run for it, and he's not going to get there. Kalen Warren knocked down by Asamoah. It's fourth down in midfield. And Gundy will send out the punt team. Well, there's so much time to go in midfield. Watch Asamoah around the 45-yard line. Recognize that good jump cut by Warren to cut back. That play did not have a chance to go the way it was kind of designed to go out around to the left. So he put his foot in the ground, checked it back underneath, and Asamoah was there to keep him short. So Tom Hutton, the 31-year-old lefty from Australia, second oldest player in college football, kicks it back there, and that punt is muffed, and Oklahoma State falls on it at the five-yard line. Gray gives a huge gift to Oklahoma State. It's Bedlam, folks. Expect craziness. Can you believe it? My, my one question, is there something with that spot on the field? <laughs> Because that's exactly where Presley made the poor decision to try to adjust late to his punt return, drops it, Oklahoma gets a touchdown, and now Gray, same deal, same spot. He misjudges the ball. This one, he's actually underneath. It just goes through his hands. The Marco Jones Jr. was right in his face, but it was legal, and says, thank you very much. A gift-wrapped possession for the Pokes at the five-yard line. Now you're right, it, it's it's gusty wind. Why try to field that punt at the five? Warren. No, it's Sanders on the keeper wrestled down. They're running that, that option, that kind of that zone read where he's looking and kind of feeling the linebackers. He can either hand that off to Warren or hold on to it. Benito, really, not just as a pass rusher, but seeing him getting off of blocks against the run, too. Warren! Knocked down a yard short of the goal line. It'll be third down. Cowboys running with tempo here at the goal line. Trying to catch the Sooner defense flat-footed. And pushing the pile in for a touchdown. Warren gives Oklahoma State the lead back. A 
five yard drive after Gray's muff. That was a heck of a collision on a short touchdown run. Oklahoma defended it pretty well. Deshaun White, the linebacker, 23, was there at the point of attack. But the leg drive, watch 23 step into this hole right there. Boom. And then there's the leg drive of Warren to get it in. Four point lead. You got to go for two. So the Cowboys trying to stretch this to a six point game inside of nine minutes to play. Bundy making the run down. Sanders rolling and will keep it. And the try is no good. Took a look at the end zone like he was going to throw, then tucked the ball. So the lead is still four. But the disastrous special teams play for Gray and Oklahoma just gives the Pokes a gift. And they have a four point lead. The Sooners teetering on the brink of conference elimination right now. Folks have reclaimed the lead here in Bedlam. All the craziness of rivalry Saturday. Then after championship Saturday, the selection show on Sunday, the exclusive reveal of the final CFP 14 bracket and all the New Year's Six Bowl games. Presented by AT&T 5G, noon Eastern on ESPN. Noon until what? Five or six? How many hours are you guys going? I, I think you, well, you have a hit, right? I have Miami. a cameo. You have a hit and then you're out? Back to the sun for you. This is the CFP rankings brought to you by PlayStation. We talked about a lot of the marquee games today. Michigan figures to jump into that top four. Notre Dame, Clavering, Stanford. And remember down here, see Baylor? Baylor looked to be in trouble, but Baylor now is in position to go to that Big 12 championship game if the Pokes can hold the lead. Capital One presenting the rankings to you. My, my thought is Michigan, Leapfrogs, Cincinnati, and Alabama after their dominance today in Ann Arbor against Ohio State, they, they could very easily move up to two. I think a lot of folks would agree based on Alabama's unimpressive showing against the Auburn Tigers. Williams ducks down at the 28-yard line, and now this Oklahoma offense has got to find a way to get going. There's some urgency here. They've had, they've had five possessions, four punts, the fumble, the, the, the muffed punt return. It's been a tough second half. And a whole lot of penalties. Long throw, and that is. He hold on to that. Mario Williams. It, did he go behind the back? I, and hold on it, to it looked like off his hip. Yeah, it sure looked like it. I think it did. Unintentionally fancy. Went into the hand warmer. I think. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hold on to that big shoulder mobility there. Somebody That's a catch, Bill. <laughs> First down at the 35. And Williams get hot again. It's been a while since he's been in rhythm. They've been pressuring him. Trying to get the ball out quickly. Another catch by Williams. He hasn't really been involved much tonight yet. Keep in mind that you got a freshman who's got an incredible future, a very talented quarterback, going up against one of the top defenses in the country as far as st statistically one of the tops. Very aggressive, very multiple, like to disguise, like to confuse. So it's not just, hey, let's crank up Lincoln Riley's offense, no problem. He's going up against a very talented group, very experienced veteran defense here. Quick throw, and once again, Williams, the intended receiver, that's incomplete. You know, this Oklahoma State defense, they've talked about reshaping the culture. They've been so tough. They've been so great all year. They've been given an opportunity now, Kirk, with that muff and the touchdown to protect a lead. This is exactly where they want to be. The whole kind of career building to this. Absolutely. Now they got him to third down and eight. Jim Knowles' defense. They came in together as young guys and really struggled with this new system. They've all grown up together, and they've been tough to beat this year. Three-man rush. Williams is going to be chased down and sacked. The three-man rush got him. Colin Oliver. What a night for the freshman. Well, it's pretty nice when you can rush three and drop eight, take everybody away downfield, and with that coverage, he's got to step up. But look at the freshman, Oliver, not give up on the play. Not only is he athletic, he's relentless.
Look at him. He says he sees him escape and chases him down. Nowhere to throw that ball downfield. And three deep and five under. All the receivers taken. Man, when you are a true freshman and you're playing surrounded by all these seniors and super seniors and you lead the team in sacks and you come up big in a rivalry game as he has tonight, see why they think he's got such a massive future. Fair catch made. Oklahoma State back to work. Up four. 6.44 to play in Stillwater. They're quite a turnaround for this Oklahoma State defense after halftime. Incredible. Got the, the strength of this team. Got him back in the game. Oklahoma has had six offensive possessions. Five punts and one fumble. Give Jim Knowles and his defense a lot of credit. Let's not forget about this play. Remember that? It was a dead ball penalty on a third and forever that they picked up the flag. But give the Pokes defense credit. They have been flying around and getting Caleb Williams and company off the field. Four-point game. Sanders with the keeper. You know what? Casey Dunn and Gundy would love to do now rely on that running game grind away protect this lead And if you don't add points take time off the clock and pin the Sooners back well, they, they have been in so much of a tempo mode tonight And now you go into this kind of four-minute offense mode and now Mike Gundy's asking his guys to slow the throttle down And work that play that work that uh, game clock is it a mistake of it? Should they keep the tempo going? Well, it's worked for him, but I think you might see it if they pick up a first down. Right now, it makes sense to try to work some clock, but you want to still be aggressive. Once again, that hard clap. It's a false start. This time, it's going to be on the Cowboys, not a fifth offside penalty on Oklahoma. Snap. False start. Offense, number 85. Five-yard penalty. It's still second down. It's Jaden Bray, the freshman receiver. Sometimes, you can outsmart yourself. A couple times tonight. Seen that, yeah. Yeah. The calmest Mike Gundy's ever been for Bedlam on the sideline. Hands in his pockets. He's kind of taking it in. I think he's really that calm on the inside. He's hanging out down there with Dez, watching Dez Bryant, watching the game. 2 and 14 against the Sooners. He's turning in. Favorite tonight. And Warren is going to be wrestled down very quickly there by Jalen Redmond. It's going to be third down and long. There's the chilled. Mike Gundy. And Bedlam is as a player didn't beat him. Sooners were pretty darn good in the late 80s. As an assistant, 3 6 and 1, and then 17th year as a head coach. He's gotten the Sooners as big underdogs, as spoilers sometimes. This is a very different role. It's hard for all these fans to feel like Oklahoma State is the favorite in this game. It's been so one sided. And a short throw. Complete to Green, who's tackled at the 20. He stays in bounds, but here comes the punt team. Asamoa got him down. Let's think about what Mike Gundy's doing here. I mean, how many times has he taken his team to the Big 12 championship game? Zero. Zero. That's what I'm saying. Yep. So he's taken them already. Right. But think about what could be at stake if he holds on here these last four and a half minutes. Did win the conference championship in 2011 before there was the right. championship game. Mims. And his back is a punt returner. Hutton. It's a boot that uh, drives him back to the 34, and he'll just scoot out of bounds. And no flag there. Tackle right along the paint. Holly? Well, guys, you're talking about Coach Gundy, and I remember a conversation I had with him this spring after spring football, and he said, we have had more energy, more juice, and more productivity in this spring than in the 17 years I've been head coach. He said, we were running up to 100 plays per practice, getting reps, really coming off that COVID year, coming out with more intensity, more preparation. And he felt it way back in the spring that there could be something special here based on what he saw with his team in that intimate setting. He told his guys, get to the championship game. Just find a way to get to the championship game. Yeah. I don't care how you do it. Yeah, they're already there. You know, rather than looking at that last possession as a wasted possession, that's a head coach that believes in his defense. They played well in the second half. Brooks picks his way and is tackled. Nice shoestring ground by Brock Martin there. 
I mean, think about it. You, you, Oklahoma's had the ball six times, and they punted five times in his second half and fumbled the other possession. So you work clock, you run three straight times, you work a little bit of clock, you punt it away, and you say, hey, defense, go do it again. Williams back pedals and delivers a throw right at the 50-yard line. Woods goes down, makes the catch, and they move the sticks. Caleb, Caleb's looking to his left. I thought he might go to Jeremiah Hall. Instead, he comes all the way back to his right and just kind of flips that ball in a heck of an effort by Michael Woods. He's kind of pointing out, showing Christian Holmes, we got a man up here. Now think about it. His quarterback's going from his left, comes all the way back to his right, and they pick up the first. The protection again, ball out very quickly. They're trying to negate that pass rush. Kirk Williams has been getting the ball out so fast lately. Yeah, he gets it out quick here, and he has really soft coverage at the bottom there with Woods. The corner that time, about 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. Oklahoma State's thinking, hey, it's not just a field goal. They got to get in the end zone. Three-man rush. Now they close in on Williams, who throws it over the middle in traffic, trying to get the ball to Hall. And that was Malcolm Rodriguez says, no, uh, I've, I've got my eye on the H-back now. Yeah, it's damage done in yeah, the first yeah, half. A lot of damage. Great play by the leader of that defense. Look at the tension. I mean, th these folks are so anxious. It's been so many years of misery. It's been so lopsided. Many feel like this is their chance. Now they have a defense to handle the Sooners. Love that the defense has got to get another stop here. I love seeing Caleb Williams' face as a young freshman out there competing, communicating with his receivers, offensive line, Lincoln, looking over to Lincoln Riley, getting everybody on the same page. Like clock winding down. They just get it off on third and four. And that is the catch made by Stogner. Another play made by the H-backs. Another first down. And again, works left, comes back to where he has one receiver. Watch his eyes. Left, the three receivers, comes back. Patience, tight window. Good job by Stogner working back to his quarterback. Great execution, great play by the freshman. Great Hall. poise, Chris. Great poise. All four catches. Stogner four. Willis three. Stogner and Willis with touchdowns tonight from that position. Inside of two and a half. Brooks. Small crease. Knocked down at the 34. Picked up five. Time really not an issue in this Lincoln Riley offense with two minutes to go in this game. Smart to mix in a run. You don't want to be one dimensional. Let this defense just lock in on these receivers. Have all three of your timeouts. Need a touchdown. Would like to do that and not leave the pokes much time. Snap comes. Williams wasn't ready for it. He was lucky that it bounced off his hand and he just chucks it away. Chris. Wow. He's communicating with the receivers. He actually steps up to his right and the ball gets snapped. He's looking to his right. He takes a step. Ball snapped. That's where the athletic ability, and there again, the poise. He doesn't panic there, but, uh, boy, just a miscommunication that time. That was good reflexes. Yeah. That ball yeah. gets past him. It's a disastrous ball. He did ball. that in the, the Cotton Bowl against yeah. Texas. Threw a touchdown pass. But it's third down again. They come. Pressure. Williams backpedaling, twisting and spinning and trying to get there with his legs, and he'll be dropped well short of the first down. Devin Harper tracked him down. It's fourth and long. Ball game coming up. It brought pressure from his left. Look at the snap low. That affected things. Now he's got to step up. This is just, this is just him improvising, trying to find somebody downfield. Nobody there, and he can't quite get to the corner. Good job by the defense by Oklahoma State. Here we go. The Pokes defense needing a stop to bleed out the last minute and a half. Got to hurry. Don't want to spend a timeout on this play. Williams 
Trying to create. Spins free. Still alive. We'll try to run for it. Won't get there. Devin Harper tracked him down. Pokes take over. 116 to play. Kid, the kid left it out there, man. The freshman quarterback, who's again, he'll have more opportunities in Bedlam. He just, he's just trying to make a play. Man-to-man -man coverage. Look at downfield. Everybody covered. He's trying to buy as much time as he can to hope to get some separation. Realizes nobody's getting separation, and that close. You can see the first down. He needed another five yards, and he had it, but Harper makes the play in the open field. That was a great look, Kirk. That was spectacular defense. They covered everybody yeah. and yeah. contained the quarterback in the end and eventually got him to the ground. Oklahoma's got all three timeouts. They'll begin to spend him here. And this is the effort. Look at he's giving everything he's got. I mean, everything, and he just, just can't get away from Harper who's one of the leaders of this team. Man. This has been a battle, and Oklahoma's <laughs> offense has been shut out after halftime. Remember, they got the, the safety, recovered that fumble in the end zone, and then there was the muffed punt, which turned into a touchdown. That's been the only scoring for the Sooners after halftime on this Oklahoma State defense. All these, all these veterans, all these seniors, they played so well all year. Didn't look so good in the first half. Boy, did they respond after the break. Yeah, they really did. We, we At halftime, we had a, what was considered the typical Bedlam shootout, right? I mean, that's what we had, and things changed drastically. Jim Knowles would be very proud of this defense, the adjustments that they made to get themselves back in the game. Now, of course, one first down ends it. Warren stopped for a short gain, and Oklahoma spends their second time out. So Lincoln Riley can stop it just one more time force a bump. They wouldn't have much time left. No, no. If, if they got a minute of seven, third and seven, if they are able to hold on here, for people that don't follow this the way you and I do, I mean, you, you have the SEC championship. Who knows what will happen there? You have a Big Ten championship. We'll see what happens if Michigan can get through. You got Cincinnati playing Houston. And if Oklahoma State wins, they're going to play Baylor. In a back-to-back -back weeks, you beat a top-10 team in Baylor. Or in Oklahoma, and then you get Baylor next week. I mean, that's a pretty strong statement in the last two weeks. He didn't look chilled now, does he? There's a little emotion in Gundy's eye. Yeah, yeah. Those are close. You just got to finish the job here. After this third and seven play, if they don't make the first down, and they don't, Oklahoma will spend the last timeout here. That's why going back to what you said, you don't want to waste that one timeout yep. offensively when they are at that fourth down. By saving it, they were able to get the ball back now. Caleb Williams trying to find some energy. He'll have one more chance. They'll have to create a miracle. They'll have to go a long way without a timeout. Oh, yeah. He's They're capable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Gundy would have loved to be able to you know, grind out one first down and end this thing with victory formation. Yep. The biggest fitting, though, this defense goes back on the field having to come up with one more stop. I think it's great to see that Caleb Williams get one more chance <laughs> against that defense. Got to get the punt away first time. Tom Hutton, in the 31-year-old, gets the snap, makes one step, and boots it high. Mims just says get away from it, and it will bounce sideways and out of bounds. 54 seconds to go, and the Sooners 80 yards away from a potential game-winning touchdown to keep hope alive for a Big 12 championship and look a long-shot CFP bid. Look, look, let's look at the motion of Caleb Williams. Listening to Lincoln Riley. This kid was, when he was recruited, you talked earlier about how he didn't play high school football last year because of COVID, the restrictions in that area. The top dual threat quarterback in the nation could have gone anywhere. Came to Oklahoma to play for Lincoln Riley. Now here he is in Bedlam. One last chance. 
to go 80 yards and get into the end zone to try to win this game. Cannot yeah, take a sack. Got to be careful about completed passes in the field to play short of a first down. That would chew up time as well. Fine time delivers over the middle, almost intercepted while cutting in front was Bernard Converse. He undercut it, read the eyes of the quarterback, knew the ball was coming, got underneath the route from Hazelwood right there. Does a good job with his quickness and instincts. Bernard Converse has played a lot of football for Jim Knowles in this system, and he read the eyes perfectly and jumped the route, just unable to hold on to it. Marvin Mims is the big play receiver on this team. He averages 22 yards a catch. Hasn't made an impact tonight. Can they find him, perhaps? Williams collects the snap, has to evade the rush, and has a lot of space. Still running. Look at him go! Caleb Williams to the 30, run out of the 25. He's got some magic to him. I mean, wow. this, this, is, this is so special to watch this kid play. Watch how this thing opens up. They're in man-to-man. -man. Nobody there to take him away. Everybody's still in man-to-man. -man. Everybody's got their back to the football. Now he's going to make a guy miss. You have no chance to tackle Caleb Williams in space. And they push him out of bounds. Almost came up with 15 more yards at the end of the play. A 50 six-yard run when things looked grim set up inside the 25 has time long throw to the end zone incomplete trying to get it to Hazelwood McAllister broke it up throws that one with a safety behind the corner, and they're just hoping there. That's a, that's a, you know, Hazelwood is physical, he's big, but when you have a safety on the hash, really good chance McAllister's gonna have a chance to come over and separate the receiver from the football, which is what he does. Caleb Williams trying to do something that would make him an even bigger legend as a true freshman. But Lincoln Riley aggressive up at the top of the screen. Pocket closing down, end zone throw, and a battle over there, and no flag. It was West, covered by Corey Black, 22 seconds, it's third down. It's underthrown, the receiver's trying to come back to the ball, and that's where you usually see pass interference with Black in the way of West, who's trying to come back for the football. I see him grabbing him across the chest, pulling him back yeah, I, well before the ball. Started. Yeah, I thought that was a surprise to no call. Those underthrow balls where the defender doesn't see it, it's going to be pass interference typically. Pressure. Williams escapes again and fires out of bounds. Incomplete. Trying to make a play was Mario Williams. Mims is over there as well. Fourth down, 14 seconds. Good job by the defense that time of forcing him. I thought he was going to take off and run again. I, and I, I'll tell you, the way Mario Williams reacted, I think he thought he caught the ball. He was, he was out of bounds. Does Williams have one more piece of magic? Down to their last play. And the play clock is winding down. No timeouts. They get it off. Williams in traffic. Dropped. Sacked by Colin Oliver. And the Pokes are going to win Bedlam. Fitting that the defense punctuates this victory, Kirk. And Oklahoma State eliminates their arch enemies. And will face Baylor for the Big 12 championship and stay alive for the college football playoff. What a night for that young man. It's very fitting that the Oklahoma State defense did it, that they stepped up and made a play. And how about Colin Oliver, the true freshman? We've been talking about Caleb Williams, the quarterback, as a true freshman. Oliver with a big night himself playing great defense off the edge and applying pressure all night long. It comes up with the play that clinches this win for the Pokes. Bedlam. First win in seven years. 
One of the sweetest ever. Who knows whether this series will survive the move by Oklahoma to the SEC. Gundy has his doubts. He says this might be the last bedlam played in this place. If it is, it's a sweet one for him. He shook hands with his hat on. Look at that. Man, he gave everything. A 56-yard run to put them in position to take shots at the end zone. Yeah, and, and let's go back and look at that play where I said it. Mario Williams reacted in a way that he thought he, he had a chance to try. Look at his throw, by the way. On a line to the back corner to four. Oh, he's just out of bounds. And then here's the play. Look at the top of your screen, the freshman with the crawling on all fours to get to Caleb Williams. And that was how fitting, all. how fitting is that's the final play. Crawling on all fours, and he comes up with the sack. Excuse, if that doesn't say everything about this defense and what this means, here's a guy who's brand new to this. He's in high school a year ago. He's out here with all these veterans, mentored by them, and Colin Oliver on his hands and knees crawls after the quarterback and makes the play to get him to the ground. Malcolm Rodriguez, the senior, the heartbeat, of this defense is with Holly. Malcolm, so many shots at the end zone right there for Oklahoma. How did this defense come up time and time again in that moment? Man, we knew they were going to take shots, and Coach Nolan said, just keep punching, man, keep punching. Got after the quarterback a little bit. He was scrambling. He's a good scrambler. So we just wanted to keep getting after him, making him uh, move with the speed. There were a lot of mistakes in this game. How did the defense overcome those to really shut them down offensively in the second half? We knew how, you know, we knew we're the best defense, so we just knew that we just got to go out there and punch and just, just keep fighting, man. Just, just do our thing, relax, and just be us. Be us. You're from a tiny town in Oklahoma, Wagner. Not a lot of schools wanted you, Malcolm. How have you come in here and become the heart and soul of this defense that is on their way to a Big 12 championship game? It's just that hard work paying off, man. Just, you know, believing in myself, coaches believe in me, teammates believe in me. I mean, we're just a close group, this uh, team is. So, I mean, it's all the hard work we put in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. And Sanders shook off a couple of mistakes, had that big touchdown run, which was enormous. There were a lot of mistakes in this game. There's be plenty of controversy. Fans on both sides, especially on the losing side, would complain about the officiating. It looks on paper, Kirk, you look at the score like another shootout. It wasn't. Pokes had a kickoff return for a touchdown. Oklahoma didn't have any offensive points after halftime. No, it, it, it turned out to be the second half. I thought we were going to get four quarters of what we saw in that second half. But uh, it was a great effort. Uh, really, both teams had some momentum, like great rivalry games typically do. Kind of goes back and forth. Uh, but, man, at the end, Oklahoma State standing tall and headed to the Big 12 championship. Williams gave everything he had, and if you said Oliver crawling on his hands and knees to make the play, that ended it. So it's going to be a rematch. Oklahoma State beat Baylor here by 10 in October uh, in a tremendous defensive performance. The Bears were held under 300 yards. Sanders had three picks in the game. They survived that, and they'll play for the conference championship. And Oklahoma State with an impressive performance very much in that conversation with the playoff. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to just go back to what Malcolm Rodriguez said. For any coaches that are out there, this team doesn't have a whole lot of draft picks. In fact, I don't know if they have any first-round draft picks. What they have is just a bunch of blue-collar guys, kind of like a Bud Foster defense. They played together for three years. They buy into the system. They like working. They like to compete. And they love each other. They have each other's back. So you don't have to go out there and hit every five-star to have a great defense. Jim Knowles is an example of getting guys that are kind of just tough, minded kids that love to play football and that's why they have a great defense Boy, it's been a monumental day and a really a weekend if you look at the the dominant teams in three conferences Clemson was officially eliminated yeah. on, on Friday night Ohio State which had won four consecutive Big Ten titles will not play for the championship Oklahoma had won six consecutive Big 12 championships they will not be in the championship game so a day of really big shifts and if you love the sport like we do how can you not appreciate what Michigan did? Yeah. The Auburn-Alabama quadruple overtime game, and then this one to punctuate it tonight. Yeah, I mean, th this is what people have been clamoring for. We need some new faces. We we need a change. We, we don't want to see the same three or four teams every year. Well, if you're in that camp, you got what you want. I mean, we'll see what happens in Atlanta next weekend with Alabama and Georgia. But it's fun to have some new faces, new players, new coaches, new fan bases to show that 
hey, there's there's opportunities. And we'll see Cincinnati. I still feel if they beat Houston, I think Cincinnati's going to be in the playoff as a group of five. We've never had that. So, yeah, there's a lot of excitement, I think, that's still brewing here over the next few weeks. But till again, September, before championship Saturday, Clemson, Ohio State, be out of the playoff mix. Oklahoma, out of the playoff mix. Before championship Saturday, oh, without believe game. me. By the way, how about that? There's going to be a big party and so on. There's a party in Waco because this comeback by the Cowboys right. put the Bears in Arlington. So a festive end to what's been a tremendous, tremendous rivalry Saturday of college football. A sea of black and orange in Stillwater. They'll be singing all night here. 37-33 Cowboys over the Sooners. Game produced by Bill Bennell, directed by Derek Mobley. Great job by our great crew all season long. Bill Lemonnier, Chris Felica in the booth here, Mark Amento, Mike Black, Darren Brown, of course. That's it. Except on the West Coast, stay tuned for your local news. BYUSC, by the way, going on over on ESPN. So long from Stillwater.